We're back on the Indie Magazine podcast today with Kevin Bisset and Pure Joy, a singer-songwriter and member of the band 90 Proof based in Las Vegas. She appears on Kevin's collaborative album Flows, and we hope you enjoy this episode. I, I don't know. I mean, I like I said, like, I feel like we sometimes get caught up in like, oh, I can't be on the floor because of this or yeah. like whatever. But I feel like if it's comfortable, like some people like those harder surfaces. So. That's true. Maybe you feel more supported or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or grounded or whatever. The fuck. Yeah. <laughs> also, we're recording just in case you're curious. Oh, so. <laughs> it's already started. <laughs> Let's go. I like to, I love podcasts myself when people are like mid conversation. So, yeah, like no, just that's like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's just like you're catching up with like as we're talking about. Something. I mean, we are. Yeah. Yeah, that's just how we do it. Um, yeah. So, how have you been? How, what's, what's been going on? Um, man, I, I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally ran through traffic every time i come here it's like i leave a little bit earlier and it's like nope it's not enough like you're just a little less late so i'm like okay next time i will leave an hour and a half earlier <laughs> to come here to make sure even though the, the, it shouldn't make any sense because no. like i'm not far away yeah i mean yes like it is I mean, it is okay. it is in a weird place I do live in a weird place in Vegas. I do fair. like this place though. Like it's oh, the, yeah. it's like its own little like vortex. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Even coming through like the walkway, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. the wooden sculptures and stuff. I'm yeah. just like, hey, <laughs> I, I love that bear. That's, yeah, like, I know. That's up. that's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> so <laughs> that bear's hilarious. Uh, yeah, no, and bears like uh, I don't know. They've uh, they've appeared in my life in the last couple of years for some oh. reason, and like kind of like. Like that bear sculpture we have out there. Uh, I don't know. Some lake I went to like an hour, uh, an hour and a half ago. See, what is time? A year and a half ago. <laughs> an hour and a half ago. <laughs> you just came from a lake. Yes, that, that I know, but that's why I was late. Um, but yeah, no, they had this, um, this Airbnb thing that they had. And like they had the bear room. Oh, so it's interesting. Like, yeah, bear blankets, bear bed. And I was like, yes, yeah, this is my, I felt like, uh, what You're the like, fuck, oh, Goldilocks or whatever the fuck. Yeah. So, so that was fun. I was actually, speaking of, I need to go to, to a body of water in some point, at some point. Oh, here, I feel that. In the future. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, um, but, okay, b b back on to uh, topic. Okay. Tangentially uh, uh, speaking. So, speaking of bears, what's your uh, Chinese zodiac? Guess. <laughs> oh, you don't know it? No, I'm saying guess. Oh, guess? Just, just for funsies. Uh, I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'm probably wrong. I'm guessing like tiger. <laughs> is tiger right? Or which one is it? No, but I mean tigers are great. Um, <laughs> are you rat? Maybe dragon? No, uh, oh. but like, uh, there's definitely some significance there with the tiger and the dragon. Um, but I'm, I'm a rabbit. Oh, rabbit. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's that, so. It makes sense. Once I hear it, I'm like, of course you're right. Right. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but. Nice. Yeah, that's my thing. What about you? I'm a water rooster. Oh, yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I haven't delved much into uh, Chinese astrology. Like, I know just like surface stuff on it. Oh, same. So, like, I don't really know. Oh, too I don't much. know what any of it means. I just think it's funny because I, like, a lot of girls right now are very into just like Western astrology. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to start like, I, I kind of like want to get into Chinese astrology. Yeah, I think it's kind of, I mean, it's like, um, I was talking to a friend about all this stuff and just like, you know, whether you believe in it or not, it's just like kind of like a fun. It's um, like, it's fun. Yeah, it's a fun like uh, field of study. You're just like, right. okay, I'm just finding out about it. Like, right. Randomly, I picked up one of my books last night and um, it was talking about like Native American, I think, astral astral or sun astrology. I'm not sure. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I found out that I was like an elk or owl, whatever. Sick. So they, see, there's another thing there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's just fun. But also like, okay, so now we're speaking of rabbits. We're going down this rabbit hole just yeah, for yeah, a little yeah. bit. Um. I feel like this, 
um, the surge of like astrology and all that stuff, uh, especially here in the West, it's just because like we're uh, here we go. <laughs> go for it. Go, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> We're going, we're going through a meaning crisis. We've been, Ooh, that's yeah. been happening for a while. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, pandemic happened, blah, 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 and all this shit. So like that also furthered the whole psychedelic renaissance, quote unquote, mm. right. That we're talking about. So since we don't, we've basically, you know, we said fuck religion, right. And all this shit. Yeah. Um, but we didn't quite understand that there was also something important about having some type of compass right i guess so now we're looking for these other like ways to um kind of conceptualize what's happening with us right because like science is great but it doesn't explain everything right right i mean we don't even know where consciousness comes from like they've studied they're still studying it and people still don't know like how how it fucking works so Yeah, yeah yeah We're trying to like grasp onto something to, you know, at least like, I don't know, I guess like have like some kind of like balm <laughs> to, yeah. for the for the void. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I feel like I, I totally feel like that's the case. And I think if I'm going to grab onto anything, I want it to be like cute animals. And I feel <laughs> yeah. like that's where like Chinese Zodiac goes. Yes. And, and apparently so does the Native American, like the old American Zodiacs. Yeah, apparently. So, so that's dope. I'm like, okay, you know, yeah. so. Owl and elk is sick. I guess. Yeah. I mean, Owls well, dope. I'll have to, when I, when I go back home, I have to look at your. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. I'll send you my birthday. <laughs> I'll send you my birthday. You have to tell me what I am. All right. I'm actually very curious now. We won't say it online just because like, we don't want people oh, yeah. stalking you. Oh yeah. We won't say my birthday online. No. <laughs> Heavens no. Although they already have it. I mean, know, I, they know I'm a water rooster. So that tells you the year at least. So. What's the year? 93. 93. I, I still don't. I'm like, I'm like. Hmm. What? No, I don't know right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, actually, we I talked about similar stuff with Jan. She was here yesterday. I love yesterday Jan. Morning. Oh, she's so cool. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we actually talked about you rec- briefly, and she said that you had the voice of crunchy peanut butter. <laughs> I, I, I okay. I'm I'm down. I, I don't. Love- I, I was so confused. I was like, "What do you mean?" And I was like, "Do you mean that her voice has like a little bit of like a gravelly crunch to it?" Yeah. Because I'm like. I feel like you're a chameleon where it's like, whatever you do, you, you can do like literally any style and it just like comes out of you naturally and you just like do it. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so when she said that, I was so confused. She's like, no, no, no. I mean the same thing because crunchy peanut butter has the crunchy parts, but it also has some parts that are smooth. Right. Okay. And I was like, oh, wow. That's interesting. No, I mean like, um, it's so, um, I don't know if you you relate to this as an artist as well, but okay. like it's so interesting to hear what people oh. like think of like or how they perceive your art or how you talk or how you sing or whatever the fuck you're doing, right? Yep. And you're like, ah, okay, I didn't even really think of it that way, right? You know what I mean? Because you're just you're in it, you're doing it. It's right. kind of hard to see, right? So, uh, yeah, no, I I I find that interesting. It's fascinating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, it's always so interesting. I like, I like more descriptive stuff like crunchy peanut butter. Cause yes. I feel like in general, what I'll get is if I'm singing, people will say, Oh my goodness. Do you know dashboard confessional? Oh or yeah. Fun? And then, I love that. yeah. And I'm like, Oh really? Like I've, and I've heard it a lot. Like I love it, but it's cause they're two of my favorite yeah. grooves. So I'm like totally cool with it, but I'm like, yeah, I've heard that a lot. So it's nice to get something like a little like weird and unique. Right. Going for, for the, for like the description. But also you. you delve with, you know, into like rap, obviously, and all these other things. So that's cool too, because it's like, well, now what? Right. Right. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is whenever I do rap, people are like, oh, you're kind of like Eminem or G-Eazy. And I'm like, are you just saying that? Cause I'm white. Yeah. Like, is that <laughs> like, I don't even like Eminem, which is, I, I, I'm glad that this isn't, you're not a rapper. Cause I feel like <laughs> among rappers, to say that you're not a fan of Eminem yeah. is like a sin, but I'm just like, ah, it doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. You yeah, know? no, I mean, look, disclaimer, uh, especially, you know, in his like peak times, I guess I was into it. I was listening right, to right, his right, CDs, right. like in my fucking, you know, uh, Everyone CD loves player, it. you know what I mean? Like Walkman, whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, and all that stuff. However, like if if we're talking about rap stuff, like 
I love um, like the Beastie Boys. Oh, dude. Common, Most Deaf, you yeah. know, all these. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah. Like Nas back in the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? That type of shit. I'm so glad that Wu Tang is here doing their things. But like, those would be like my types of like rap music. And right, also, right. like, more like modern, I guess, would be not they're not modern, but you know what I mean? Um, like 21 Pilots. Oh, 21 Pilots is so sick. So that's kind of like what comes to mind to when me. Like, when I hear your stuff, like, it's more of like a. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, more around. Like top genre. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, like, um, of local artists and stuff, I haven't, um, have to go back and, uh, see what echo's doing but echo's really amazing as well right he's he kind of has this whole hard hop uh style going on so it's kind of like again a mixture of like alternative rock right right like right so, so much so that he's like collaborating with emo bands yeah which just makes sense yeah right? so that's what i'm saying so i'm like i feel like you know people try <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're yeah. like m&m you know what right I mean? right like you're like you're, you got can you go a layer deeper? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's funny because, like, for me, I relate because, like, some of my favorite and most influential hip hop stuff for me come from the Korean market. Mm. So people like Top uh, and yeah, G yeah, Dragon, yeah, yeah. Yeah. who I just love. Yeah. And I think they're great. But I mean, most people in America, if I say Top or G Dragon, have no idea what we're <laughs> right. talking about. I mean, honestly, I've also not like been super deep into uh, into the K pop side yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah, but. Um, when I was teaching uh, like younger kids and stuff, I would ask them about like what what they want to work on other oh, okay. than their like, you know what I mean? Their designated, I guess, like uh, assignments or whatever. And some of them would, you know, throw out like, well, I've been listening a lot to like BTS, right? Or right, something right, right, like right. that. And um, uh, I entertain it because obviously that's what they're they're right. into and there's nothing offensive about you know what I mean right, like the right. lyrics or anything but also it's actually pretty like it's multi-layered because oh. like they're singing involved they're dancing at the same time they're rapping and it's in Korean yeah <laughs> you it's know what crazy I mean? yeah it's so cool yeah so I was like okay you know like I can get down with that you yeah. know it's just that like um I feel like it's 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 not just it's not so much that it's not my cup of tea. So I'm not. I'm not leaning into that right now. However, I can dip my toes into right, that. Right. You're like, you know ooh. I mean? yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like. I feel like you're. You're an expert toe dipper. So I'm not surprised. <laughs> expert toe dipper. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Actually. Yeah. You I know? think. I think that's a. That's how I. I envision you as an artist. You're an expert toe dipper. Okay. Well, thank you. Um. Actually, yeah. I. I can see that now. That's been. As far as imagery has been going on the last few days, I'm like, uh, yeah, I can see how this has like been my path for the most part. Right. And at first, um, it would, I would kind of have a little bit of uh, tinge, like, I guess like a pain point there, just mm -hmm. because it's like, especially when you're working with like producers and stuff like that, it's like, well, what are you? Right. Yeah, You know what I mean? And it's like, it's so hard just because like, I like so many other different things. Right. And so it would give me this pain point because like, first of all, I couldn't communicate like, well, this is me. And right. they're like, well, but you also do this and that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. So then I kind of wrestled with that for a little bit. Right. Um, and then, you know, you get to the other side where you're like, well, fuck that. I'm gonna do my own thing. You yeah. can't fit me in the box, blah, blah, blah. But then you're also like, now I'm fucking lost. <laughs> Right, because right? you're just like out in the ethers, and then you you come back full circle, and you're like, you know, that's just who you are, right? And that's okay, right? <laughs> if anything, it's great. I I love it. I think well, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was actually interesting because originally... I mean, in a way, you do that too. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, we're we're a little biased here. <laughs> I to me, I think of it as like I'm wearing disguises. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, you know, I put out something like. Uh, this flows project and it's like to me i'm a pop artist deep in my core yeah and right now i'm doing a hip-hop project so right. i'm just putting on hip-hop clothes yeah <laughs> but underneath it all is pop like it is pop yeah to me but with a hip-hop hat on right no and i think and i mean even like it it rhymes hip-hop pop <laughs> right yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. also they're very closely related absolutely um and i think of like uh, I, in the same way, like for me, I'm like, well, I like, I, there's always like a rock element 
with whatever I'm doing, whether right. it was reggae, right, or pop or anything like that. So in the same vein, that's where I'm at. Where it's like, it's like you're a rock artist who puts on hats. Yes. For different acts. Right. Or you're like, you're putting in accessories. And then if we're yeah. going to, I've been like deep into Carl Jung stuff. <laughs> oh, dude, Carl Jung is dope. <laughs> right. So like, when you think about the archetypes, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same thing with the hats. Right. right? I mean, right, like the genres, yeah. like it's. It's so interesting. Uh, I think just like also when we talk about genres, religions, languages, all this stuff, like it's all talking about the same thing. Mm. We're just using different terms. Like yeah. however you perceive that, that's just what it is. It's just like the six and nine situation. Like you're both correct. You're just looking at it from a different angle. Love it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the same symbol, just one's upside down. Yeah, and you're, you're just on the other side of it. Like, yeah, we're both, you know what I mean? So that's where we, I feel like we get tripped up to. And again, like, especially with music and, um, again, working with, like, really established um, producers and whatnot. And, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love that experience and whatnot. But sometimes I feel like this happens to everyone, not just them, uh, where you kind of just, you're so grounded in what you're doing and you know that this is the formula that works that mm -hmm. you kind of want to want people or artists to do that as well mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's for good intention for the most part right but you know it's you have to know that as i, I guess as an artist yourself to lo know like how you work how you process and again what archetype you're you're embodying at that time right and it might not align with what they're doing at that time and you're just like and you just have to um cultivate that discernment i guess right so that you could just continue to um do your shit. <laughs> right. Totally. It's, it's interesting. Cause like, uh, looking at the song we, we have together, yeah. uh, cut the fabric. The, the name is just like, <laughs> escape me for a second there. Okay. Uh, when I, when I asked you to do it, part of my thought process with it was like, Oh, PJ has this. Oh, also, sorry. Just quick thing. I remember. Let's get it. Jan decided that the, Oh, no. So what happened is we mentioned you briefly, and my roommate overheard us, and he was like, pajamas? Because we said PJ. And Jan laughed so hard, and she's like, that's what I'm calling PJ from now on. I'm calling her pajamas. Um, that, that works. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I thought was so funny. I was like, oh, PJ's going to get a kick out of that. Uh, so I think, like, when I hit, up, hit you up, I was like, oh, I know PJ as this rock artist, and she's released some really great rock tracks uh you know monster fire what where those have like a more of like electronic elements to them yeah a little bit and yeah. then looking at your uh pure joy people album uh that is like just it's a rock album yeah like 10 percent. i <laughs> might for some reason spanish got in my brain 100 percent <laughs> a rock album and uh so i was like oh i'm gonna invite her over to be a rock a rocker <laughs> on this this hip-hop track and then you come over and you're like, I kind of want to sing R&B and rap on this. And I was like, sick. Like, <laughs> completely unexpected. And then you knock it out of the park where oh with your rapping, it's just like, excellent. And I was like, oh, I didn't think PJ would be like this dope rapper. And then I see you at a show later oh. and you're rapping again. And I'm like, there's this part of her that we're not not realizing is there and that is like underutilized where she's this like great rapper. And so I'm like, it, you know, so. Oh, I mean, first of all, again, thank you for the kind words and whatnot. But yeah, speaking on that show, uh, when, I, I told you that I was like, um, oh, fuck. Now, Kevin would, was good, is going to think I've just been practicing for this rap <laughs> shit. And, you know what I mean? For this whole time. And I really didn't expect that no, to yeah. happen at that time. But sure. like, like you said, like, just because I'm a toe, ex, quote unquote, expert toe dipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're a chameleon. You know, like, I've, I've, I have that in there. But again, it's just, it just depends on, like, what, to me, as far as, like, songwriting goes and just uh, performance or whatever, it's more of, like, what does, what does this need right now? Right. You know what I mean? Because it might, that's where, that's where I was able to fully realize the, um, the necessity of uh, expert toe dippers <laughs> like right. yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because when we have, uh, when we're just like so, um, so in our box and whatever that is, whatever genre you're doing mm -hmm. or in that archetype or whatever the fuck it is, it, it's hard to 
to accommodate what that piece of artwork needs. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, okay, like again, okay, so I'll like, I love screaming, right? And all that right. stuff. But it's like, this song does not call for that. Right. It's just like cooking. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, like, uh, you know, whatever dish you're cooking, it's like, okay, if you're cooking like, um, I don't know, like chicken noodle soup, like it wouldn't, y- yeah, you can make it spicy, but it, that's not usually like the thing there. You know what I mean? Right. But you can have that if you want. Like maybe you want to invent like a different type of chicken noodle soup. You right. know what I mean? So I feel like that's very important to um, kind of have in your tool belt tool belt as an artist whatever art you're doing is to like not be so boxed in to whatever your expertise is right you know what i mean and just be like and that's where we kind of also lose the ego a little bit yeah because it's like especially for that like uh the thing that's speaking of like what i'm doing with music as you know obviously collaborating yeah Um, so i've been doing that a lot um really enjoy that it's awesome yeah, because also you get to see other people's perspectives and then you get to put like your own little spice to with whatever they're cooking. Right. And then you see the dish and you're just like, ah, you know, that's so right. amazing. And it's not just so much that you did something for it, that you were you were a part of that and you were able to ba- basically help, you know, make this dish and bring it up. And now people can eat it. And you're just like now you're able to share something. Right. Um, but that's what uh, that's one of the. uh awesome things that I guess like have been um reward rewarding I guess for lack of a better term well no that that's a good term <laughs> rewarding for like collaborations is yeah. that you really get to you don't if you want to do more of it and you if you want to have like amazing collaborations is to like tame your ego tame the dragon yeah you know and you don't have a choice you have to if you want this dish to really you know what I mean happen and again, um, this is supposed to be what's happening in bands, but sometimes it's hard. Oh yeah, you know, so hard with bands. Yeah, because you get lost in this vortex, and it's just like it's just like being in a long term relationship. It doesn't matter how much like you guys care for each other, blah, blah blah, and all this stuff. Like at some point, there's this dynamic that gets created. Yeah. And so now you kind of have to like break that up a little bit, right? And so you you know you look for other things to do, blah blah, blah whatever, and all this shit. Um, but yeah, um, I guess like in a way, like collaborations is being like in a <laughs> open, yeah, poly- like polyamorous average relationship, whatever. You know what I mean? Hundred uh, percent. Again, it's all the same, right? It's just again, there's like different things involved in it, but that's just kind of how I look at it. But yeah, so really loving the collaborations aspect. Like as you know, I'll play shows, you know, like maybe once or twice a month and stuff like that. Right. Which is great too. Um, but uh, I've been on the other side of that where I was just like playing a lot of shows all the time. And as you know, just like had the tour last year, you know what right. I mean? And all that. It's great to have those moments of just like pedal to the metal. But um, as far as like uh, recently, yeah, I've just been like, let me just chill. Right. But again, while you're chilling, you can still work on this stuff. And I feel like it creates space for, again, like you call me up about this and I'm like, Okay, yeah, I can do it. Right, like right, right. I have this time. Let's fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like that was a pleasant surprise. That's why I'm saying like it's good to have like um have like your routine, I guess, or structure or whatever the fuck, but also leave room for other things to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I yeah. totally get that. I I feel that too with like my current situation. Because I kind of have this like long term collaboration going on with Harley. Yeah. Where we make music together mm. as Jack Jack. Right. Right. And then I also do my own stuff. And I'm realizing, oh, this own stuff is such a great opportunity to just be a musical whore, you know, <laughs> like to be, a, to be a little slut where I'm just like going off and working with like all these different people. Right. You know, and so it's like I have this polyamorous relationship basically in music. Yes. Yeah. Where it's like Harley's the main person I'm working with. And then I'm going to branch out and like work with Pure Joy. I'm going to work with, you know, Larry Coleman 2020. I'm going to work with Jan Jan. I'm yeah. going to work with Cody. Like I'm yeah. just going to work with all these different people yeah. and try to create cool things with them. Right. And, you know, you, you can be an ethical slut. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> There's an actual book <laughs> called that. So oh, there- <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, I forget the name of the author, but it's okay. like... Have you read the book or just saw it? I uh, saw... I, I've, I've read pages of it. I don't okay. have the actual book yet. Right, There's, right. Oh, man. 
I need to get another bookshelf. <laughs> I have so many books. Oh, really? Uh, Are you a big bookworm? Yes and no. Well, okay. okay this, the reason why I say that is because um, I feel like the, the term bookworm is like you're reading all the time, right? Right. And I am reading all the time, but it's not always books. Okay. You know what I mean? It could be books or magazines or an article online or... Right. I, even tarot, you know what I mean? All this right. shit, whatever. And even when you're just like, I feel like when you're just sitting and just like looking at, I don't know, a scene outdoors or whatever the fuck, you are reading the scene. Right. So yeah. that's why I'm like, in that term, like how we use it, I'm like, well, no, I used to be more like that when I was younger. Like I would read, I don't know, three or four books within like a week. I was, I was this weird ass kid that would just like be carrying the dictionary, just yeah. like, with me all the time it's like my purse yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean so i was that more typical like bookworm when i was younger yeah but now i'm just like yes i'm reading but it's not always book does that yeah that makes uh, sense okay <laughs> that makes a ton of sense okay so i was recently talking with harley and we like you came up for some reason i can't remember <laughs> and we were talking about your old act with pure joy people right mm -hmm. and I was thinking, wait a second. Okay, so you used to play, it used to be an act, just making sure I have all the facts right, <laughs> where it was you playing a bass, singing with a drummer. Uh, yeah, so actually, so... Is that how it was or no? Yeah, so like, well, well, it... Pure Joy People was um, basically, speaking of, it was a polyjamorous group. Okay. <laughs> right? I so, love that. But we would more, like, have, you know, at least, like, there are more people with us, like other keyboards, stuff like that, blah, okay. blah, whatever, right? And then as you heard, Octopus Woman, that was like one of the, um, uh, the last uh, products, I guess, okay. from, uh, from that iteration. And then uh, it came to be where uh, it's just me and Rob now, and like, um, he focused on the drums, and I did the... Yeah, I was playing bass, bass, so we were kind of doing this um, drum and bass situation. Right. Um, and that was, that became Death Buddy. Okay, that's Death Buddy. That's yeah. something different. Okay. Yeah, so that was the last iteration of, like, that... Um, of the Pure Joy People experience. Yes, 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 yes. So it became Death Buddy. Okay, when you were doing that, did you do that at VMS? Vegas Music Summit. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it at the D? Or somewhere at the Grand. There. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> did you do that in like 2019? I believe so. I okay. Think, did we do a Kid Cudi song? I can't. I think you did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's actually when I first like met you. What? Because I was at that VMS. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, these guys are dope. And like Harley and I talked about you guys a little bit. And then I'd like completely forgotten about it. Yeah. Because that was like years ago. Right. And then I met you again when you were doing stuff with Jeff. Yeah. So it just like occurred to me recently. She said that I was like, wait a second. I, like I never made that connection that you were that same group playing at VMS. And it was like in that like little room that yes. was like off. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they'd have like the conferences during yeah. the day and then they had the bands come out. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was yeah. a dope time actually. Yeah, I miss VMS. Oh, wow. I didn't see. Thank you for bringing that up actually that that's where we met because I've had, I recently, so I'm jamming tonight with um, uh, Chris, right? Chris Mendoza. Okay, well. great. And so, like, he's, uh, uh, what do you call this? He's jamming with uh, Tits, <laughs> Trust okay. in the Sun band, okay. right? Like, with, with some of their members at the, the usual place, I believe, okay. tonight at nine. And oh, sick. So, the bass player, Stefano, I'm like, I see him, and I'm like, dude, you look so familiar. And then we just went on this whole thing. It's like, yeah, man, from like, we go way back from like fucking 10 years ago or whatever the fuck we're talking about. But we have no idea what we're talking about, right? Right. We're just fucking around. Yeah. Then he sends me a message yesterday and he's like, dude, I remember where I met you. My wife told me she was talking with you at this, you know, a gathering, blah, blah. I was like, oh, holy shit. So that's why I'm like I'm having those moments right, this week. Right, so right, thank right, you right, for right. reminding me. Where we actually met like a while ago. Right. But we didn't realize it. And then we like met each other again, forgot about that. Yes. And then and now we put out like a song together. So it's crazy how like the time can do that. It's yes. weird. Yes. It's weird. Yeah. So I realized that and I was like, wait, 
is this the same? And Harley's like, I don't know if it's the same person you're thinking of. And I'm like, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, here we are. Yes, yes. No, yeah. that totally happened. I mean, like, yeah. um, I don't know if, uh, uh, have you seen the movie Lucy? No. With Scarlett Johansson? No, no, no. What happens? Um, well, uh, I don't want to give too much away about it, but like, but basically there's a part there where huh, Morgan Freeman. Okay. <laughs> so that's all you need to know. Scarlett right, Johansson, right. Morgan Freeman. You're like, yeah, all right, it's, yeah. gonna, it's probably great. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to go watch this movie at some point. But basically um, they were asking her about like time uh, or like, yeah, something like that. But her response was something about like how time, um, is how we is how we exist here right. so like there's a scene where there's like a scar a, a scar a car like uh, on the road and so she's like if you like um speed it up right like keep speeding speeding up to the fastest uh you can like let's say you're uh, editing a video at some point it disappears because it's so fast right right so um that's why we have time so that we could uh we could exist like so we could also keep you know track of like events and stuff like that mm. but i don't want to get too deep into this but like basically without that we don't really know what the fuck is going on right 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 but it doesn't and in my mind i'm like well yeah that's why we created it and it's like even though i say it as a joke i'm like no it is a man-made construct because it's like it was nowhere like nature do you see birds doing that do they write that down do they look right, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. they just know it they just you know what I mean? But with us, like, we have to kind of, like, um, make things chronological so that we're, like, we don't break our brains. And <laughs> Totally. Like, you know, so, anyways. Yeah. So you can keep track of everything. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so we exist. But then it, the other part to me is that I was thinking about this last night. Like, again, these events where you're, like, oh, yeah, this happened before. It's not, like, you you meant to forget it, right? It's not, like, we meant to forget that. It was right. more of, like, you needed to move on to like have um, this bandwidth to do the other things because, and, and, you know, speak, especially right now that we're coming back full circle with it. It's like, well, yeah, see, it's, it was good to forget because right. now like we're able to come here and just like, this is, this is the, the right time. Right. <laughs> quote right. Unquote. Right, right, right. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I feel like, um, we are similar in like, uh, to a computer. Where, right. like, you know, you have, like, all this RAM, right? The storage, whatever, bandwidth. And it gets to the point, though, where, like, you can't, you can't fill it too much. Right. Because, yeah, the computer will overheat or whatever. You need to defrag. You need to delete some files, blah, 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 and all this shit. And even though you're, like, I want to keep all this stuff because, like, I also don't want people to feel a certain way, blah, blah, or I also want to hold on to things. But it's, like, no, 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 you have to, like. There's literally no space. There, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And sometimes you don't even have control on what goes away. Like, it just goes. Right. You know what I mean? Totally. But um, I guess having some comfort in that fact that, you know, it will come back around if it's supposed to. You know, and, right. and mostly, most of the time it does. You just don't know when or how. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah. There's so many layers to that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Which I feel like... It, <laughs> I feel like that's just how you are though. Yeah. You just you just say stuff and there's just like layers on layers on layers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I uh, that made me think of from back then is like us both being toe dippers and chameleons. Yeah. Like I look completely different back then. Yeah, and I'm yeah, sure, me and too. I'm sure you yeah, look completely yeah. different back then. <laughs> I look different yesterday. I have right. purple hair now. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like Wait, the last time I saw you, you did not have purple hair. No. But I'm not surprised that you have purple hair right. either. It just makes sense to me that you would have purple hair. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like, I'm just like, like, if I didn't think about, like, oh, what instruments were they playing? There's no way I would have known that was you. Right. Just because we both look like different people at this point. You yes. know, we're just completely, we've changed so much. Yeah. Because of time. Right. And it's like going back to the song, <laughs> cut yeah, the fabric, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Sometimes you do have to like cut out pieces or whatever. It's like, okay, that's too mm. long on that side. You know what I mean? And all this shit. 
and um i it it's it's a nice surprise when you're like right again like able to re-meet people because they are different yeah you know what i mean yeah we've put on different clothes exactly <laughs> and we we're just completely different like the 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 outward facing you know disguise we have over our bodies yeah. is different yeah and i mean i i mean in turn also it 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 kind of signifies that also something internally changed within you you know whether it's like okay, you know what? Like, maybe I've been doing this genre and you're just like, I, I kind of want to, you know, delve into this genre type right. thing. And that happens internally first, right? It's something you think about. Right. And then, you know, it's something that you do. Um, speaking of, like, I think we talked about it briefly. Like, it was kind of a whirlwind how we, we wrote the song, but I'm so, it was so interesting how it just so fast it just happened. Yeah. Right? But now that we're here, I'm going to ask you, like, what's, Again, like, what's the inspiration with Cut the Fabric and all that? What's the backstory, all Great. this stuff? Okay. Great question. <laughs> I think we did talk a little bit about this, yeah. but also for podcast people, mm -hmm. uh, people who are listening. Uh, so what we did, what I did, is I have a meditation practice. So flows, in general, is off of one of my meditation mantras, which is when I'm... <laughs> I'll hang upside down uh, yeah, 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 yeah. on uh, an inversion table. I'll have like earplugs in and then I'll just repeat in my head the mantra like flows like a river and that'll just let thoughts kind of um, flow through me and so that I can be open to new thoughts and that gets me out of writer's blocks. Yeah, and, yeah, it, yeah. and it's just great for life too, just mm -hmm. to stop thinking about negative things and to let them flow through you. Yes. Uh, so then I picked up another meditation practice and this one is more focused on redefining. Mm. So what I do is I'm meditating. I get into just like a meditative state. And then I let go of the parts of me that I don't want. Yeah. And so I like mentally think like, hey, these are the things I want to change. And then I go through and redefine who I want to be. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and I, and I thought a lot about too, just... Right now in culture, I feel like a lot of people do things like the astrology thing and they blame it on something out of their control. Right. They say, well, this is just who I am. <laughs> and like, I don't hate that part of them. It's more I hate that specific mindset yeah, yeah, yeah. of like, I am unchangeable. Right. And to me, I'm like, no, we're, we're constantly flowing. We're constantly changing and we need to redefine ourselves. Yeah. And so that's how I approached cut the fabric is like time to cut the fabric redefine myself be a different person yeah than i was before and let go of who i was and then have new clothes on right you know using clothes is kind of that allegory for that what i thought was interesting is that you actually know so much more about sewing than i do <laughs> So when you got on the track, you were like, yeah, sewing actually works like this. And you were like explaining details about like actually making clothes. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, like how perfect could this be? Now I have someone who actually knows what they're talking about. So there will actually be realism in this song. And it's not just me <laughs> saying just these thoughts I have about it that might be true. Right. You know, you, you actually knew like, oh no, this is how you sew and this is how you would make a different, these different types of articles of clothing and yeah. da da da. And that made its way into the lyrical content in a really cool way. Yeah, no. And I think like, actually, here's the thing. You did know. Okay. And here's, okay. here's where we're going to get weird. You did know. Because like, how, how was it that you're, how, I, I, we didn't know, right? Quote unquote. Right. But all of a sudden you're just like, okay, let me just call it. This is the song. Like, this is what I want you to do right. with it. Right. But you didn't know, obviously, that I had some knowledge, right, right on that. Right. So it, you did know, though. There was some knowing, but you, you just didn't know, no. <laughs> right. There was, there was like a spiritual guidance. Exactly. That, and I think that happens with art so much. Yes. Is that there's something that leads us to the right place. Yeah. You know, for me, I think of it as God, but someone else might call it some other idea. Yeah. As leading me to say, oh, PJ's the one I have to hit up for this. Right. And then you get on the song and I feel like you have this super interesting perspective and understanding 
in your writing toward it. Yeah. And also towards your vocal performance on the track. Which yeah, I which I so also didn't, again, we didn't know, right? But apparently right. We, we both knew, knew at some point. And like, um, the, the cool thing about it too for me was that like how just like how fast it came to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And how it was like, I think I'm, especially doing this for quite some time, as you know, it's right. like, you know, you're like, you, you have to grind. You have to, you know what I mean? Of course, you, you want to make it, you know, sound the best, blah, 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 and right. like be clear with it and whatever the fuck it is. But um, when I asked you and you're like, yeah, I did, I did everything. Like, it sounds great. And he's like, here, but if you want to re-record some stuff. And I listened to it once and I'm like, you're right, Kevin, this is, this is lit. <laughs> and I'm like, but I'm going to listen again tomorrow, right? right? To like, you know, for good measure. Uh, right, right. Again, we're measuring, cutting the fabric. Um, and I like, that's the other thing too about like how I've um, really got out of the quote unquote <laughs> matrix of just like music production uh is that like actually the simpler it is the better i agree you know what i mean and it's like i understand that there's a fine line between like just being lazy and just you know what i mean all right that's good enough right and you know the other side where it's just like oh my god we've been you know working on this song for fucking five years and it's one song right <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, yeah and don't yeah. get me wrong some songs warrant that right right However, um, I was just like, to me, it was, it was, I was just like, whoa, that's cool. You know, and like, I feel mm. like that's been happening a lot lately, too. And again, just like we're talking about synchronicity. I mean, we're all, fuck, we're all weird here anyway. It doesn't right. matter, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I don't, whatever. But like, I think it's not just like also, not just the weirdness of like a spirit, like a spirit, you know, controlling all these people and whatnot. Like, it makes sense that we would have this synchronicity. And I feel like, synchronicity has this weird connotation right now where it's like oh yes it's woo stuff like no when you think about the word synchronicity right it's just like it's synchronized it's like when you think about synchronized swimming they're they're just doing it at the same time yeah how come we don't have this weird thought about like oh synchronistic swimming like no they're just doing it at the same time right. so in my mind i'm like why would we not have these synchronicities especially as artists especially here being local right right when we're tapped into the same energy like yeah. energy or art or genre, whatever the fuck like it makes sense yeah 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 oh 100 percent makes sense <laughs> i agree with you so much yeah <laughs> it's so i'm actually curious now with those thoughts do you normally not write songs quickly it depends okay i feel like it depends so like let's say for um uh oh yeah i Again, thank you for reminding me about the whole going upside down thing. Because, yeah, that's kind of, yeah. that's what we were talking about while we were writing that yeah, verse. And yeah, you, and you were talking about how the upside down thing had been part of, like, other parts of your life yes. recently, too. So now this crazy. goes back full circle to that whole yeah. uh, drum and bass situation. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I knew some guitar, right? And I would, you know, play drums here and there. But, like, I didn't really, I was intimidated by the bass. Really? Yeah. But it's also like, it's not, be I also didn't have the need to learn it, right? Okay. But at, it, with this iteration, I was like, well, this is what we have to do, right? So I was like learning the bass, but when I would get, um, get in front of a block or meet a block, mm -hmm. I'm like, what else is something that I'm afraid of? Going upside down, right? Mm. So I'm like, Okay, I didn't really make that connection that clear at that time. Mm. I just kind of did it. But now I, I can explain it better. Yeah. I was like, okay, what I'm coming, like, uh, yeah, coming through a block uh, while learning, like, a riff on the bass. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to do some handstands right now. And so mm. after that, you know, I'd, co I'd go back and then learn the bass. And for the most part, it would work. But sometimes I have to do it, you know, a few times. But basically, I think to me, like how it made sense was just like, okay, well, let me just like basically shake that off a little bit. Like, the, yeah. you know, something is calcifying, right? So let me just like go upside down. You know what I mean? Just um, recalibrate when yeah. I come back up and then I can do that again. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. <laughs> that makes so much sense to me. I feel like that is like the way to do it. And I think that's part of what got me through the songwriting stuff is yeah. like getting upside down, clearing the head, 
reapproaching it. Yeah. And, and I mean, obviously, it you know, it's it's, it's here. It's clear. Right. Uh, but I mean, even like, uh, so that's why to me, it was so cool to find that out when you said that to me. And I'm glad that we're, you know, we're talking about it right now. Right. Because it's, we're on the same thoughts on that. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel like I remember one of my friends uh, was like, why are you so obsessed with handstands right now? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I just, it's, it's fun. It's scary. But also uh, my first thought was like, why does it matter to you? Right? Right. And then second thought, oh, maybe they are curious. You know what I mean? Uh, and like, I don't know. Um, I don't know if we ever talked about it again, but I just remembered that comment from that person. And I was just like, now... If I ever see them again, I'm like, I can tell you why exactly. I can lay it out for you. Because and, you've thought about it. Yeah. And then also I have another artist friend who can tell you why. Yeah. We love going upside down. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's you know? awesome. Yeah. And then the other thing too that led me into like, again, so I'm like, okay, getting into handstands, headstands, blah, 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 whatever. And then um, got into aerial yoga. Right. Awesome. So again, going upside down and I was like really realizing I'm like, I have an aversion to gravity. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, I'm just going to go with this. Right. Um, then I just really loved it. I, it's not because I was like super flexible. I was actually I felt like I was like probably the slowest, like as far as like learning, like a lot of the techniques mm -hmm. that was being taught at that time. And then all of a sudden I'm in this teacher training for like aerial yoga. And I'm like, I have no business being here. Right. And I, you know, I just, I just fucking loved it. And then all of a sudden now I'm just like doing all these fitness and yoga certifications back to back to back to back. I was telling Chris last week, cause I was like organizing and decluttering my house. I'm like, dude, I found all these certifications and I'm like, I look at them and the time was like, like literally three months, three months, three months, three. I'm like, why the fuck did I go that hard? Like, that's cool, but fuck, like, did that really happen? Do you, do you teach yoga now or no? Like, aerial yoga or anything or no? I haven't in, like, this, uh, the, the past, like, year and a half. But before that, yes, yeah, so I was teaching vocal lessons and then I was teaching... Yoga. Yeah, like, basically yoga-infused, like, fitness classes. Cool. But started with aerial yoga. Again, going upside down. Right, It right. just opened up, like, this portal of other things. Interesting. That's so crazy. I, I recently went to, and I hadn't gone to a yoga session in a bit, but I went to a yoga session. And the guy was like, dude, you know your yoga? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's fun. And then he's like, you could teach this stuff. And I was like, nah. So I feel like I can totally understand that vibe of just being like, what are you talking about? Me teach? You, like, no, dude, like, I, can, I can. Yes, it was the same. So yeah, exactly what you're saying. That's how I felt as well. Yeah. Um, but you can if you want to. Yeah, I don't know if I want to, but right. I was just like, <laughs> I was, it was almost like a thing of like, I never even considered it because I was just like, oh, that's, I'm not that good. Like, I'm not like one of right. those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he was like, oh, no, no, you, you're legitimately in that realm. And I was like, oh, that's weird to think. Like, I would have never put myself there. I just like doing it. To me, yeah. it's just relaxing and it helps me like stretch out the muscles, like get into a different headspace. Yeah. And I just, I think it's a healthy thing to do. So it's, No, I it's think so. I actually need to uh, dive back into it because speaking of, like, I think what happened to my system was like, I was going so hard that yeah, the last couple of years, like I haven't really, um, after that, like I, I was kind of getting into jujitsu a little bit and all that. Cool. So like more the other side, like more the yang, right, like, yang yeah, yeah, side yeah, yeah. of it. Right. So I'm like, okay. Cause that's the other thing too, as we know, I'm like, I like to have a combination of things. I couldn't yeah. just teach like, um, in mad respect to my, my yogis and whatnot. And especially the teachers, like, if I, if I just did a shtanga, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, it's something that I would want to entertain later. Um, but I'm like, it's so structured that I'm like, ah, like I, right. there has to be some kind of other element. That's why I love aerial yoga. Right, right, Cause right. Cause you know what I mean? It's like, it is yoga, but it's off the ground. Right. And it's like, it's play. Yeah. You know? So I think, yeah. Um, that's why, uh, yeah, I, I just went so hard that I was like, my system was just like, and I didn't know this. Again, I'm just, just like more hindsight. I'm like, oh, that's what was happening. Like, I haven't, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't worked out <laughs> in like, I don't know, maybe seven months or something like right, that. Right, right. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I'll do stretches here and there, but like, I, I haven't been um, super crazy into it lately. Um, but I, I do want to kind of reincorporate that again. Right. Um, 
But I think I also wanted to assess, like, why the fuck was I doing that so much? Right. You know what I mean? Like, what drew you in? Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, okay, well, because we don't realize sometimes that, like, there's subtle forms of escapism. Yeah. Right? And then especially for me, <laughs> coming, coming full circle to, like, the octopus woman stuff. Um, octopus, sis, octopi, octopods, whatever you want to call them, um, are great escape artists. Right. Right? So I feel like speaking of archetypes, and here we go. Fuck it. <laughs> Octopus Woman came from a dream. That oh. whole album, you know what I mean? Like started from a dream. Octopus Woman, if you listen to the words of that song, it's literally what happened in a dream. Oh, That's okay. all. Like I just described what happened there. Oh, I wild. didn't do anything else. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And then, it, you know, other things just happened after that and became this album. Right. So I realized that I'm like, oh, okay. Um, it's showing me this because I do have that quality in me. Okay. Which is great. However, what I've had to learn the last couple of years is that you can't escape all the time. No. And just because you can doesn't mean you should. So I'm like, oh, okay. So let me be speaking off, like, again, the whole upside down hangman situation. If we talk about the hangman of the tarot, that's, you know, you'll see the, the character is uh, tied down. to, yeah, upside down. His, you know, foot tied to the tree and whatnot and, and all this stuff. And I feel like that's what I've, I've had to learn in the last few years where it's just like, just be fucking still, bro. Just, just mm. chill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just chill the fuck down. And that's the thing about if you, and if you can speak about this too, about like going upside down, there's really nothing else you can do. I mean, yeah, you can move your feet and all this stuff, but you're, you, you will you're see stuck that, up there. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to like walk. Of course you can move other people do that and whatnot, but um, in a sense, you, it's not the same as being upright. Right. 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 Is that totally, totally. If you want to, yeah. Like riff on that a little bit. So I'm going to go back to a thing real quick. Cause I think it's interesting uh, talking about like the Tao Ching, right. With like you going through your yoga way, which was very much in that yin yeah. and then going into uh, Jiu Jitsu, which is very much in that Yang yeah. side of it. Yeah. I feel like the doing nothing is also part of like the Tao Ching, right? <laughs> yes. Where it's like that kind of like middle path of like neutral and like, and so it's interesting that you've been feeling a need to be neutral in yeah. your own life as you've also in your workout habits gone into a neutral state, Yeah. <laughs> which I find fascinating. <laughs> yeah. It's just another weird connection. Um, yeah. But the, that, that's, I think being upside down too. I think the thing is gravity is always pushing us one way. Mm. And so it's really nice to tell gravity like, hey, like work this part of me. Yeah. Like getting gravity to work for I us. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like instead of pushing me, you know, feet on the floor, head, head up high, it's head on the floor, feet up high. Yes. And I mean, I, we should experiment with this. I have here and there, like, experimented with thinking upside down oh interesting but now that we're on this oh, we should try this it would be fun <laughs> yeah yeah getting on inversion tables and singing upside you down. know what i mean or, uh, just see how that works right because uh, speaking of like i was thinking about this um i don't know maybe last night i'm not sure who knows what is time <laughs> right. but like the whole idea of making gravity your friend right yeah. or your bitch, whatever works for you, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, perspective works for you. Um, I was thinking about this uh, in regards to singing. Yeah. Right? Like where um, it, singing mostly comes right from like uh, the waist up. Right. But it really only works when you're, you know, when you're grounded. Hmm. So like, especially with your shoulders, you know what I mean? You like, you, you want to be relaxed. So, right. like, I feel like I, I, I've seen this, I think, like, sometimes with some of my students. And sometimes, you know, I've experimented with it myself. And I'm like, yeah. So, if you were, like, working out or doing yoga and all this stuff, like, that, that would help with singing. Because I feel like singing is actually a very physical thing. Absolutely. But also super mental, as you know. So, I'm like, okay. Once you've worked out the parts where you feel the tension, like let's say in your shoulders, you know what I mean? Your hips and all that stuff. And you've kind of worked that out. 
which you want to, because you don't want to think about that when you're singing. You want to be as grounded as possible. Mm. You know what I mean? But not thinking about it. Because right. now you're focused on, you know, your, uh, what's going on, like, from the waist up. Right. Right? Because, um, what do you call this? Like, if you're not feeling totally grounded or confident in your body, and I'm not just talking about, like, how you look at yourself in the mirror and stuff. Right, I'm right. saying, like, if you're not connected with your body, you right. can't fully express yourself totally. vocally. Because it's not about, yes, you can learn all the techniques. That's, that's totally fine. However, um, let's think about all of those other singers from the past. Like even from like back, back in the day, you know what I mean? Right. Where we didn't have like produced recorded music. How the fuck did they sing? Did right. they really, were they thinking about that shit? No, they weren't. It just so happened that we got to a point where we we're like, oh, we evolved, right? Quote, unquote. Yes. However, we've now created this, like, these matrices, <laughs> I guess, where we're like, well, no, the, these, are, these are the terms, these are the techniques, this is the structure, this is how we do it. Right. And then, you know, you, someone's, like, looking at it and it's just like, oh, my God, I'm not, oh, I didn't open my mouth, oh, I didn't keep my chin tucked, blah, 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 and all this stuff, and now we're, we're in this loop. Right. Right? But we forget that, no, we, we fucking created that. We just wrote it down. You right. know what I mean? Right. But there's spaces in between that. Speaking of like these like liminal spaces, the middle path. Right. And I'm like, and you can weave your way through that. Right. You know, and so that's why I'm thinking to myself, I've been thinking a lot more of that. I'm like, no, because um, like the way that I teach uh, vocals is, is very physical. And what I mean physical is that like, we're not talking about like, okay, you fix your vibrato, you know what I mean? Learn this yeah. theory. It's more of like, okay, there's something going on with your throat. Okay, there's something going on with your hips. Or, you know what I mean? That type of stuff. Mm. So speaking of like the toe dipping thing, um, I feel like I've had to, for me, what's worked for me, I'm like, I've had to incorporate my fitness yoga background into singing because right. I'm also not like classically trained, you know? Right. Not out of choice. That's just what it was. Right. And so I'm like, I have to learn my way of teaching and how I do it. Right, right, right. You know? Right, right, right. So, anyways, yeah. <laughs> no, that's super interesting. I I feel that with like um like to me part of the idea of warm-ups and exercises and like vocal training yeah is to practice those like rigid things yeah that will make put your body in the right place. Yeah. And then later you know what I mean? So you don't have to think about it. Right. So yeah. that when you're outperforming, you're 100% in that moment. Yes. You're just having fun with it because you have refined that technique mm -hmm. and you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, uh, same thing with like sparring with and fighting, right? When you're kicking a bag, you're kicking a bag so that later you can kick someone and you're in a fight and it's going to feel natural and it's going to feel easy. Yeah. And it's going to be fluid. You're not doing it so you can be rigid that whole time. You're doing it so that later you can be fluid mm -hmm. and safe. Right. Yeah. And like it, you only employ it when you need to, right? Like you're not really, I feel that's the other thing about um, learning about martial arts. Again, I'm not an expert on it. I'm like, I'm a toe dipper. Right. You're a toe dipper. <laughs> right. As I was you're talking about, but, right. um, but learning even just a little bit of it, um, will actually make you not want to fight. And, right. Right? You know what I mean? It's like the opposite happens. Yeah. It's mostly people who don't really, like, delve into that at all are just, like, looking for a fight. Right. And you're like, you know, if you've, if you've delved into that even just a little bit, you're like, okay, first of all, like, I've, I've seen you punch. That's, you know, that's, uh, that's not going to work. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Second, you know, maybe, and again, this is not all the time, but, like, maybe if you've, if you've really kind of, learned like the the principles i guess of it you're like that guy, i could kill you like i, I don't want to do that right right you know what i mean so like you're thinking of all these things once you've kind of at least dipped your toes into that and right. so that's why you don't go out looking for fights but also you you were able to channel it already yeah you know what i mean so like i feel like what's happening with people who are like uh, always getting into fights too and stuff and this usually happens when you're younger is that there's no channel for this energy that has nowhere to go so it's right. like hey fucking fight me 
You know right. what I mean? Right, yeah. And it's like, that makes sense. And it's like, okay, no, like, okay, I put them into like a martial, like, okay, speaking of, um, Bruce Lee was like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he was just like picking fights and shit. And it was like, oh, you know what I mean? It just needed to be changed. Look, look at what the fuck happened to him. Right, right. <laughs> you know you become mean? like one of the greatest ever. <laughs> I mean, he, he's probably the greatest. I mean, right. yes, there's a lot of greats, but as far as like how, right. how he did it, I'm just like, even though we've known of him for so long, it's just like Jimi Hendrix and all these people, you're right. still in awe right. every time, even though you know of it. Right. You right. know, and there's like really nothing that compares to them. Um, and I'm not saying just because, oh, they're the greatest and everybody. No, because like each great is its own great. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sorry, I just got a text message that's incredibly wild. Let's get it. <laughs> and I'm going to yes. respond. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <sighs> that's insane. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so one of the things, I, I'll just explain that text real quick. Okay. One of the things I've been doing, mm. <laughs> which is insane to me, uh, when I... When I meditate, I just like to experiment occasionally and be yeah. like, how much can I like make something happen in my life? Like something specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, like as someone who enjoys K-pop music, mm -hmm. there, there've been a few K-pop concerts here recently with the Blackpink yeah. one. And now there's twice one coming up this Saturday. And so one of the things I do is I, I meditate and I'm like, I'm the type of guy who gets free tickets to, and then I say the concert. Yeah. Right. So the twice concerts coming up and in my brain, I'm like, I'm getting a free ticket to this concert. And I'm like, how am I getting a free ticket to this concert? I don't know. I don't know how it's going to happen. Right? I, I got one to the, I got two to the Blackpink concert. Just what? like randomly. So I was like, let's try it again. Let's see if it can happen. Yeah. And in the back of my head, like there's a part of me that's just like, there's no way this is going to happen. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. I think it's going to happen. I, yeah. I'm going to go for free. I don't know how. And then just barely a friend of mine uh, uh, texted me and said, Hey, do you want a free ticket to the Twice concert? And I'm like, of course I do. Absolutely. Uh, You're like, why is this a question? Yeah, I, I'm like, this is amazing. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, I, I'm very excited now. This is going to, sorry. Sorry, that just no, happened no, no, to that, me randomly. No, no, sorry. That's, that's amazing. So like, yeah. okay, so with that practice, like how do you look at that? Like how, if, I think, okay. To me, it's a confirmation of the, if you put something out there and you take out the parts of you that don't believe it mm -hmm. and you, and you say, I'm not letting that stay. Yeah. That it can happen. Yeah. That like almost anything can happen. You know, that's my perspective. And you've, you've, that's been happening to you mostly like in the last, I, in the recent times. Yeah. That I've t taken up that specific meditation practice where I'm like redefining myself. Yeah. I find stuff like that happening more and more where I can just kind of like make it happen. So how does that make you feel? It's amazing. It's a therapy session. Oh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> oh, no that's I, I really, I'm like, why does that make you feel? That's what half of these feel like, you know? Uh, I, I feel it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, it's so empowering. It makes you feel like, uh, oh man, we have some control. Mm. You know? Like there's something. There's yeah. some things we can change. And sometimes those things we can change aren't even things we think we can change. Because mm. a lot of times I'll tell people, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get a free ticket to this show. And they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> And then I do, and they're like, how are you always getting free tickets to these shows? Like, yeah. this is amazing. So, yeah. I feel like, actually, the, the no, you're not, you know, are, I, I now look at them so differently. I've always felt this way, but even more so, like, with confidence now that I'm like, I actually thank them. Because it's, it's like a little, like, test from the universe. Because I feel like. Oh, Again, whatever you I love feel, that. You know what I mean? I love that way of looking at it. Because it's just like, hey, like, are you, are you sure? You know what I mean? And it's like, it, it's, it's been channeled through them, right? right? And if it's, if we believe in the theory that we are the universe expressing ourselves, it, itself right. through us, right. then that's another expression of the universe, right? So right. it's just like, no, you're not going to get those tickets, Kevin, right? And you're just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you just keep going. And then now you have the free tickets, right? right. So it's just like, it's, uh, I'm saying that I would, I, I'm thankful for it just because it's like, it's showing you even more. Right. That, yes, you're on the right track. You right. are doing the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So like, same thing with that thing with my friend where it's just like, why are you so obsessed with handstands? You know, 
and I'm like, I'm not, again, I have to go back to that practice um, these days, but I do thank them for questioning me uh, or for questioning that part or whatever, just because I'm like, it didn't stop me, actually. And here's another thing, too, like my, my nieces would, when they found out, when, yeah, when they found out that I was like, oh, okay, a singer, blah, 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 doing all these things. And they're like, oh, you know, Tita Princess, <laughs> like, that's so cool. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. I want to do that, too. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> and they're like, what? Why not? No, you don't. And then even, even their mom would be like, why are you saying that? I was like, well, first of all, I'm looking out for my nieces. <laughs> You know what I mean? This is a hard industry to be in. Oh, yeah. Right? And then second, I'm like, if they really want to, then they'll fucking do it. And third, if they do do it, then that's what they're supposed to do. But again, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be like, yeah, totally fucking do it. Like, if they ask me questions later, like, hey, I know you said to do, don't do this, but I really want to do it. I have this blah, blah. Okay. I guess, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then you could show them the ropes. Exactly. Because they, they passed that first like block which yes. you think everyone has to go through yeah i i actually had a moment similar to that for me where uh someone my math teacher who's this great lady freaking love my math yes. te teacher <laughs> mrs fulmer she was amazing <laughs> she was so cool she posted this thing where someone was saying like do you really want to be a rock star yeah and i was like oh this is perfect so because i want to be a rock star so i read it and he starts going through all of the sacrifices you have to make to do it and I looked at all of them and the thought went through my head of like, am I willing to make all of these sacrifices to have this? Like, am I willing to make that exchange? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm 100% down. And so then that's when I knew like, yeah, I can do this. Was this recent? No, this was like 10 years ago plus. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw that and I was like, no, that's and, the path I'm going And you for. feel like you're still there. Oh, yeah. Like oh, no, I'm still 100% willing. Uh to continue to make those sacrifices uh, so that I can reach that point, you know? Um, oh, sorry. I'm letting her know this real quick so that they don't go to someone else. Well, yeah, no, this is important. Right, right. <laughs> so wild. I, I'm going to say, I think... Um, sorry, I'm just going to check something real quick because she's saying she needs my she's saying i should dm her on twitter and she asked me what my twitter is and i'm like <laughs> I dude use, i don't even know i don't need, I, I don't use twitter like right ever. and it's 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 x now yeah, excuse me <laughs> yeah, 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 but i i really i have no idea yeah, what okay, my right. login is i i don't know what's happening with that um and that's another okay. thing that i've really Done. kind of um I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm still on Instagram, but even there, I'm like super in and out. You know I what I mean? That. I feel that. But, I, I don't like social medias, but I feel like Instagram is necessary for musicians. Yeah. Like, I think that's okay. Again, it's something that I can, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I'll check it, but um, I, I'm not really, that's why I'm like, yo, yo, text me. Yeah. <laughs> and even yeah, then, yeah. like when I, I'm I like, I'll, I probably will not respond right away sometimes, but I'll be like, you know what I mean? I, yeah. just, I just have to unplug, man. I feel that. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. That's actually, that's actually one thing I think is nice about doing these podcasts. Cause I've been doing them with like everyone who's on flows mm. and it's been super fun. Yeah. Is that it's a chance to just like sit down and just chat with these artists who I love yes. and who I like most of them, I consider friends, yeah. you know? So I'm like, Oh, I get to like sit down with a friend for like a couple hours and we're just chatting. Yeah. And yeah. Our only goal <laughs> in this entire time is to chat and about music too, which is like, I don't know if it's your favorite, but it's like my favorite thing to talk about is music. You I, know, dude, I mean, that's, that's the other thing too, about like, I, I'm like, um, I don't, I don't have like a lot of social things that I do these days other than like a, at a show. Right. Right. Or music collaboration or, you know, right. but I also have a day job. Right. So, right. which is mostly online. That's the other reason why I have to, let go of the screens because I was like, bro, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm on this on all day. Yeah, no, it, it gets to the point where I, I've been getting more of these uh, messages uh, on like from my job where it's just like, PJ, are you AI? You know what I mean? Like, and it's not even a joke sometimes. Like, 
they're like, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't know if you were, a, you know, a real person. Or yeah, not. Be- and and it's like again, it's like, yeah, it's funny, but also it's kind of scary at the same time. Totally. But and it's, so I'm like, those are kind of like my little markers of like, okay, I need to unplug a little bit. Don't get me wrong, right. I. Again, there, this is a whole hot topic, right? Like AI and all this stuff. But I'm like, for me to, to keep my sanity, I guess, I'm like, I have to unplug. So I, I do love having these moments of, I, and I do love long form. Like, I love long form. You know what I mean? Such a fan of long form. Right. So I thank you for having me here. Uh, and I, speaking of, like, that's the other. So I don't have a TV. Um, I, Great. I don't either. Yeah, well, right. I mean, I play video games on the TV here. But yeah, I don't, like, no, it's totally fine. It's not even like I don't have a TV. It's like right. no, no. I'm just I, saying. I'm not like I don't have like cable or anything. Is what I mean to say. Right, which is totally yeah. fine, right? Yeah. But I think like for me, um, if there was like something that replaced that, it's podcast. Mm. And then speaking of like, I've I've been um, <laughs> I got my vocal boost today. <laughs> oh, sick. so I'm going to I'm going. Let's see how this goes because it's actually a it's a dressing room. <laughs> okay. Because it's much much uh much cheaper than actually getting a vocal booth, and I'm like, yeah, why the fuck would I get that for twice more if I can just have the structure and maybe like again like packing blankets, right? I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do that because yeah. where I'm at, I I have to do this, right? right? So, but I've been thinking about, I mean, obviously music stuff, but like really, um, delving into the podcast situation. You should. And so, like, you're definitely going to be there. <laughs> right. I love it. I'm so super excited. Just let me just let me set up everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'll so but you're right that it's like, I think that's what's I think a lot of people, too, are just like really going going into the long form now just because it's hard to like when you watch the news. Right. They just have to, like, say s- snippets of things within yeah. like an hour. And there's yeah. ads in between of that. Right. You know what I mean? So you don't really get the full picture. So the, yeah. you, you can't really fault them for like just giving you the headline because that's all the time that they have. Right. <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I feel it, that's why it's good. It's funny because it's like our type of revolution these days. It's not like even though obviously that's happening, you know, um, everywhere else as well. But it's not like where back in the day, it's like we have a problem and it was like a oh, civil war or you know what I mean? Now it's more of like it's a mental game, in my opinion, mm. where it's like, OK, um, as we know, or maybe we don't. But most people know that there's there's less and less people watching like the news in that way. Right. right? On cable news and all that stuff. Yeah. And we're we're kind of going to, yeah, this like long form situations and all this stuff. And that's how we quote unquote fight back, right? Right by like disengaging from that because uh, yeah, that's how they're that's how it's powered, right? By right. by viewers, by you know what I mean, and all this stuff. So, in in a in an interesting way, we are whether whether we you know we were we know much about the topic of like mycelium or like mushrooms or fog whatever stuff like that. Uh, scientifically, yeah, like they they went underground. You right. know what I mean? Like, because they're not, and um, I can't go into the whole history of it, but, but basically they, wait, they went underground and, and they're like a totally different species and they just kind of became like their own kingdom down there. Yeah. Right? And so I feel like that's what's going on with us and also like mm. Star Wars fans or whatever. It's like, this is the rebellion yeah. and resistance, I guess. But it's like, you can't be just like going there and just attacking. You have to kind of go like a roundabout way. I love it. And so, and just this, like for us, I feel, and again, this is just how it's making sense in my head. I'm like, well, if, if people don't uh, stop watching TV, then they will produce that. Yeah. And, you know, people will be forced to, or they will be forced to come to this long form. And until that happens, you know what I mean? We just have to keep doing it for us who are wanting to do that. Um, and of course, when they, when they decide to come there, Right to the to the long, which they are already. Yeah, they're they're like slowly making their way in. Right, there, there's going to be a, a a way for them to corrupt that. It's already happening. Right, you know what I mean. hundred oh, percent. And it's instead of us like being ah oh, fuck, you know they're going to do that. Well, but it's like just knowing that this is how the game works. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're always going to come in and try to get into that new thing. Right. That's how it, that's how it goes. Yes. Yeah. And then again, it's just like the whole thing of like you were talking about having those synchronies or synchronicities or like manifestation stuff where like no you're not not gonna do that it's like looking at it that way where you're like thank you (laughs) and then you know because that means i keep i need to keep doing this right (laughs) 
Right. You know what I mean? So that's what they are for me. Yeah. And again, is this like something that I've perfected? No, that's not even really the fucking goal. Like, what the fuck is perfect? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. And I think it's interesting, like going for that, like long form thing. Where it's funny because in terms of like time Mm -hmm. spent on the album, I've spent so much time on the album. And in the end, it produces this content that is very short. Yeah. You know, yeah. like 11, three minute songs. Yeah. Whereas we're doing these podcasts and I'm doing this with a lot of people. This is taking us like no time at all. <laughs> yeah. But it's creating this incredibly long form thing yes. that people can unpack yeah. as like a companion piece to the album. Dude, I love that so much. Which I think is just so interesting because yeah. it's like the shorter thing is the longer consumption thing. Yes. Whereas the thing that took longer is the short consumption thing. Yeah, no, I think I, I think it's so fascinating. It's great. I, I again, we I just whole had that whole thing for long form, you know, just a few minutes ago, right? So yeah, I think it's great, but it's also like I find that for me, I've been kind of going back to to like some of the artists. Speaking of, okay, so um, podcasts that I've been listening to, there's a lot, but two that I'm really obsessed with right now mm-hmm. is Third Eye Drops by Michael Phillips, okay. <laughs> and um. Yeah, he he also goes into like creativity, you know, and um, okay. psychology. He's really into Carl Jung, you know, and all yeah. this stuff. But he interviews like a lot of these like teachers and people and just like his friends, whatever, and all that stuff. It's really great. Um, and then the you know, the other one is um, Creative Codex by M J Dorian. Okay. So this is more like um, about like yeah, really more focus on creativity. But he goes into like there's some meditations on there, but he he does like these series on like um, like he just finished one on Alexander McQueen, you know, who was a fashion designer, right? But before that, he had a whole thing on like uh, Frida Kahlo. Oh, interesting. And then I think he did um, on his Patreon, he did like a Kurt Cobain series. You know what I mean? So it's just like um. I, I I am that like that's my jam. I love listening to that stuff, and so that's why when you're saying you're like I don't know about you, I'm like bro. <laughs> you're like it's totally in your real house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sick. Okay, great. I love it. Yeah, I'm a huge. Uh, I listen to a lot of the Rick Rubin podcast things oh, he I does love with uh, Tetra Grammaton. I have I have to I have to go there. It's so good. It's so good. Have you read his book? I am. In, oh, I, I'm in the middle of it right okay, now. Cool. So like the way. For some reason, I read it like three times through. I loved it. Okay, I need to. I've been um con- consuming it slowly. Nice. For some reason, that's oh no, just that's good. A thing. I wish I would have consumed it slowly. I did not consume it slowly. <laughs> I consumed it in a torrent of yeah. of just desire. I just rav like I was like ravaging through that book because I thought it was so cool. But go on, sorry. No, no, no. I I I'm, I want to hear more about that actually. Yeah. No, I listened to it one time through. Uh, and I do audiobooks like while I'm tuning vocals and yeah. like working on engineering stuff. Um, or even like setting up these mics. I was listening to an audiobook yeah. <laughs> of this like uh, old fantasy series that I read as a kid that I was like, oh, I wonder if I even understood everything going on. And listening to it as an adult, I'm like, shoot, I, <laughs> <laughs> when I read this as a kid, I did not understand what was happening in these books. Um, but so I'll listen to a lot of his podcasts his podcast that way. And so when his book came out, I was like, Oh, I'll read it this way, you know? And so I went through it and I was like, this is really good. And I really liked a lot of the points he went through. And I got like two thirds, three quarters of the way through. And I said, I got to start over. Mm. And so I started the book from the beginning and read it all the way through. Okay. And then after I did that, I was like, Oh man, that was really, and that took like a few days. Yeah. You know? Cause I was just like constantly like, I'm making dinner. I'm listening to it. I'm driving the car. I'm listening to it. I'm tuning yeah. vocals. I'm listening to it. And so I was like, and I listened to it like 1.5 speed. So then I was like, well, time to run it again. So I <laughs> started from the beginning I love this. and then yeah. went through it again. Cause I was just like, there's so many good pieces of information here yeah, and interesting dissections of how to be creative mm-hmm. that I was like, I need like multiple exposures to this. Yeah. Do you feel like you have like a, uh, now that you've done it a few times, do you feel like you have a better, um, understanding of it like the did that help having it like multiple times yeah oh yeah yeah i feel like multiple times of anything kind of deepens the understanding yeah, yeah, yeah. of that thing you know yeah uh although sometimes i only want to experience something 
just like once or yeah, yeah just yeah, like yeah. one time you know yeah. even if i love it yeah because there's this initial reaction to it mm. that can be so strong yeah and you're like oh i loved that i don't want to go back <laughs> yeah. because i might not love it <laughs> right yes. so one for me with that was uh princess mononoke ah. which is this yeah. Hayao Miyazaki film yes love it i have to i have to rewatch it but yeah no so i, I just watched saw it. the boy in the heron so. oh really i haven't seen it yet i've heard it's really good though okay so i watched it as a kid but i only saw like clips like bits and pieces yes, yes. and so in my mind i made it into the best movie ever made <laughs> I, lo- I yeah okay what about the premise <laughs> and i i thought oh man this is such a a great movie this is the be- this is definitely my favorite of his movies you know yeah. it's so good yeah. And then I watched the whole thing as an adult. And I liked it. I thought it was yeah. a good movie. But I was like... I'm ready. <laughs> I was like, nah. This isn't it. And I wished I hadn't. Because <laughs> I, w- I, I had had so many concepts and things that like ingrained themselves into my brain. Yes. As being these really beautiful things that I'd gotten so much from. Yeah. Like, I- I'd written like mental fan fiction <laughs> regarding like the whole like... Yes. The corruption that t- slowly takes over your body, yeah. you know, as also being the thing that makes you powerful, but you're yeah. trying to get rid of it because it is corrupting you. Yeah. Uh, like that concept was so cool to me. And I'd, I'd done so much with that in my brain. And then re experiencing, I was like, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. But then I rewatched Howl's Moving Castle and I was like, oh, this is a masterpiece. Like, yeah. this is legitimately, like, I was like, no, that's definitely my favorite of them now. Did you see it in theaters recently? Because you know how they've been. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't see it in theaters. I watched it. My, my roommate had his HBO Max hooked up to the projector oh, okay, downstairs. So they have it on there, yeah. And so I was just like, every Sunday, I was like, Studio Ghibli Sunday. Hey. And so I just put on, like, a new one. And so I rewatched it through that. And okay. so I rewatched, like, Nausicaa, House Moving Castle, I still, I still have Away. to watch Nausicaa. Poppy Hill. Poppy yeah. Hill's really good, too. Yeah, I uh, speaking of synchronicities, um, I saw like a tag on my on one of the magazines yesterday, last night actually, like around midnight, where it said Poppy Hill something. And now you're saying this, so I guess I have. So to. now it's now it's in there. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Poppy Hill is cool. It was weird. There's a weirdness to it, but it's really cool. And then Wind Rising. Wind Rising's awesome. I haven't seen that one. Um, Wind Rising's I think the dope. Most- so I did see Boy and the Heron, um, right. but after that, I've never seen uh, Paprika. Oh, I've seen the- Paprika either. Ooh, is it good? Okay. Yeah, I know? mean that's not Miyazaki, but like if you really want, if you're real, uh, hmm, how do I say this? Uh, if you're into psychology uh, okay. and anime and yeah. also dream work, or just like curious about it, or just yeah. want to watch something that's kind of just out of the norm. Yeah. I would recommend to watch that. Dope. Also, the visuals are like really cool. Like it's a, uh, it. it's like a hardcore Miyazaki. <laughs> okay, so you have. I feel like you have so many interests in so many different places. <laughs> yes. What was like, what was your growing up situation like in terms of like your music exposure mm. when you were a kid? Because you grew up in the Philippines, right? Yes. And then moved to the U.S. a little later. Yes. Well, I w- I was born in Cali. Oh, you were born uh, in Cali. Yeah, I know. Okay. It's fucking weird. No, no, no. Because it's I'm, usually the other way around. I'm trying to understand it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so you were born in California. Yeah, Orange County, right? Great. I love, I love Orange County, by the way. I know. I need to go back, actually. Have you not been in a while? Or? Yeah. And uh, again, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Look, guys, again, again, disclaimer. I was born in California. Love California. But what the fuck? <laughs> going on yeah it's a wild <laughs> so, place it's a wild place you know what i mean so i Beautiful do need place. to go back but we're not you know i digress right okay 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 so you you grew up in cal cal you or were born, born in cal, cal yeah cal, and then you know they moved to the philippines and i grew up there great. and then you know okay now we're here right that type of situation but like with music yes the stereotype is true uh filipinos are great singers i guess you know blah 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 some of my favorite singers in town are filipino because yes. like you jan yeah. Chris is great. Uh, Sonia. Sonia. Clarice, who yeah. texted me, she's actually in this, I'm making like a K-pop style girl group yeah. in town. I remember and that. she's in that. that um, and she's Filipino as well. Yeah. So yeah, no, there's a ton of- There's a ton. There's I, a ton of phenomenal Filipino singers. 
here in Vegas. Right. Specifically, Bruno Mars, also yes. someone here in Vegas, Filipino, who's amazing. So yeah, just, <laughs> you know, they're there. Infinite it's, talent. It's just a thing. But I think like I'm saying that to you, like going back to the childhood where like most of my relatives could sing, right? Right. Like it was just a thing that, so in, in a Filipino household, um, you need to have, uh, to be authentic, you need to have a rice cooker. Uh, you need to have a karaoke machine. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's those part type, of it. Yeah, that's just those types of things. Um, so, so a lot of them are, are great singers in this way. Um, so I guess I was immersed in that way. But as far as musicians, no. Oh, they're just singers, not musicians. Yes. So, but again, mm. also nobody took it as a profession. Mm. You know what I mean? They were like politicians, nurses, pharmacists. You know what I mean? That, that type of stuff. Um. So it was a very interesting, like, uh, environment in that way. Um, but I think my gateway drug was actually through dance. Interesting. <laughs> okay, know. continue. Sorry. I'm, I feel like I'm endlessly fascinated by your life. Continue. I, I mean, I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I just live here, bro. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a line in the song, y'all. <laughs> it's also something that's just something you say all the time, which I think is so funny. Which is true. I'm like, I, I feel like I'm like, okay, I just live in this body, I think. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so like uh, the gateway drug was through dance. Um, so my relatives also like dancing, but you know, and interestingly enough, it's like ballroom dancing that they like. Oh. But they, we were, they weren't doing it professionally. They were just good at it. Yeah, they would just do it while they're drunk on Sundays after church. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you know, after they've confessed all their sins uh, and they're all like, that. Time to ballroom dance. You know, yeah. And they're like, okay, cha-cha. That's like, again, if you go to a Filipino household, like, truly, like, they love cha-cha. Really? I love stuff. cha-cha, too. So yeah. that's funny. There you okay. go. Great. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're initiated. I, I, you're I feel there. Like, I feel like I get along with Filipinos, you know? <laughs> yes. To be fair, my, one of my best friends in the whole world, he's from new york and he's a new yorker at heart like yeah. that is he's less of a filipino than a new yorker right but i get along so well with him and he's filipino so it's like maybe i am like secretly a filipino in a white guy's body you know maybe you know like i i was talking to um a friend of mine actually about this like some again whatever when when i talk about these things about spirituality religion blah blah, blah it's more of like just my curiosity like right. i don't really have like a i'm really you know married to this or that right, right, right. type of thing but like past lives right yeah um there are times where especially like with a particular culture yeah where you're like man why does this feel so at home to me right. and you're like but it's so fucking foreign like right. i don't get it right and so again just like what we we're talking about earlier in the podcast right like where it's like well, we're just trying to, you know, conceptualize the thing. We're right. trying to, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, well, maybe that is a past life thing that you had. Who totally. fucking knows? Totally. Could be. Doesn't matter, right? It's yeah. just like you're just interested in it. But Yeah. I just love it. Yeah. Um, so, so singing's a big part. Ballroom dancing's a big part of your growing up. Yeah, or just like dancing in general. So the dancing got you into the singing? Yeah. So like, here's, here's how this really happened. Okay. So I'm just I'm just setting up that foundation there, I Great. guess, with like how my family was when, when it comes to music and right. arts or whatever. So um, in school, like I. Um, I'm not sure how it happened, but for some reason, I, I got into dance groups and would choreograph dances. And that was like a thing that we would do. Awesome. Right. And then we had our boom box and stuff. It's like, oh, PJ, how old are you? But, like, <laughs> you know, we'd have our boom box, whatever, we'd get cassette tapes and, you know, we would choreograph dances and then would do this then um yeah like i think my first year of high school there um i uh, one of my new friends I, I moved to a new school one of my new friends gave me a uh a bootleg copy of make yourself by incubus oh that album. awesome yeah and i'm like okay I, I put it in you know my cd player and i was just like holy shit the fuck is this shit oh yeah right but before all that i was already like you know writing stuff like poetry and short st stories and like i was telling you i would you know just be <laughs> weirdly reading the dictionary you know yeah, every day yeah, type yeah, yeah. of stuff um and just reading books and something clicked in my head where it was like yo these songs they're like poetry i was like oh maybe that's the thing Oh, you know what I mean? I'm like, beautiful. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. So that 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 just happened, right? Yeah. In my mind, I didn't do anything with it. I was still in, in dance and all that stuff, right? 
but then like when I when they moved me back here, um, a couple years after that, because they moved me back first to California, like kind of around Bay Area, then they moved me here, right? And uh, I got into a different. Your your parents moved you here, or who's the they that's moving? You yeah, the, they're my parents, but they've been separated for a long time, okay, okay. and it's so it's like it was my dad in California, and then it was my mom here. Okay, so. Yes, I was being passed around right, right, <laughs> like right, a hot right, potato. Right, right, and I was right. like, okay, like I said, I just live here, bro. Right. So, okay, you know, my mom was like, oh, I heard you were like really, you know, like in going to church, you're, you know, into choir, blah, 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 and all this stuff. Oh, yeah, that's the thing I forgot. I was in choir here and there. Um, and I'm like, yeah. So she would like try to bring me to like Christian churches and stuff like that. And that's when I like, um, like picked up the guitar. You know, and all this stuff. Um, and that's when I started kind of to put together these songs. Um, mm. like, like some of my poems or short stories into the songs and whatever. And again, it was just for me. Like I was just doing it. Right. Then um, uh, <laughs> a Christian rock band was looking for a vocalist. And uh, that's, that's, that's how it all... That's, that's how, how you it started all, in the thing. Yep. Crazy. So... Again, sorry for the long setup, but you, no, that's a perfect setup. You know, that's that, what I that was the best I could do. <laughs> that's the origin story. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I'm sure there's other things in there, but as right now, that's what I'm remembering. <laughs> okay, cool. So they did a lot of karaoke. What, what what was like the music that you guys were listening to back then? That like, so make yourself was huge for me. For you, yeah, for you. But what was like the stuff everyone else was listening to? Oh, that okay. was just there, like from my family. Yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. Um, well, my dad really loved Elvis. Okay. Apparently, I didn't. I didn't remember a lot of this, but when I lived here with my mom, um, she would tell me that she's like, "Oh yeah, you and your dad would sing like Elvis Presley songs when oh, we w- cool. when we lived in Alaska." Blah blah blah. I was like, "Oh, cool!" And so I didn't know that was a thing. It was like a something that I had to tap into when she told me. I forgot right. about it, probably from the culture shock. Right. I don't know. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So that was a thing. Um, uh, my mom loved uh the Carpenters. Okay. Um, and my, um, like my relatives back home, like my aunts, you know, and all that, they, um, oh man, that's so diverse actually. No, I think, I think, I think I've got a good it. picture so far. Just like that Elvis backdrop with Carpenter stuff and then Incubus fueling you. It's kind of cool. Cause like Elvis is like the Genesis of a lot of rock, right? you know, for a lot of people. Yeah. Not for everyone. Cause of course, you know, you go back. Further, you get like Fats Domino. Yeah, and or if like you that. like really get technical with like the history. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But Elvis is like a really big starting point for a lot of people for rock. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting that you see yourself like first and foremost as a rock person, and that's one of like the first things. Well, I'd even make that connection that you're getting into. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah like, so I guess that's a thing. Yeah, it's interesting. Fascinating. I yeah. love it. And there was like a lot of Latin stuff just because of like the ballroom dancing, you know, ah. like, because, yeah, most of the songs would be kind of like that. But Philippines is an interesting place because it's like, you wouldn't think it's that diverse just because it's like, it's mostly Filipinos, right? So it's Philippines. That makes sense. Right. But when you, uh, like, for on, on TV, like, there's, tel- I, I grew up watching telenovelas, you know, like, right. Spanish and stuff like that sometimes uh just because that's just what they watch but we also have anime on tv like i'm just like, talking about regular right you know what i mean right which is which is so interesting to me that it's like this culmination of these different cultural influences yeah. where you've got like the american stuff going in you've got like the south american stuff going in and then because you're in asia you know you've got the asian stuff making its way down yeah because i remember at one point when we were doing the song like the last vocals you were doing i was like oh you kind of have like a Utani Karu thing going on and you were like oh that's funny and you're like you know what it actually kind of feels like to me and I was like what and you're like oh it's it's kind of like an Utada vibe and I was like what <laughs> no I said Utada and you said Utani Karu and I was like I was like first off I feel like half the people I talk to don't know that reference like when I say Utani Karu they don't know what I'm talking about Second, I thought it was just the funniest thing that I said it. And I was like, oh, you got like an Utada thing. She's like, uh, you're like, I don't know about that, but it has like an Utada Ikaru thing going on. And I, was like, <laughs> I know. I, I can't remember for the life of me what I heard, what I thought you said. 
Because, yeah, I, I, I completely thought you said something else. That's why I said that. Right, right, right. You're like, I don't know what you said, but it has a new yes. thing going on. <laughs> okay, VJ. Okay. <laughs> like, we know you're weird, but fuck. Like, this is hella weird. It was so funny. It was so funny. But I feel like a lot of people in just, like, pure American culture... If I said Utari Karu, they don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I've mentioned Utari Karu to Jan a couple times. Because we did, like, a little music video mm -hmm. that was... Because you know her, her big music video where she's washing her hands for Hikari? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did a similar music video where we were just wrapping presents. And that's, yeah. like, the whole music video. Because yeah. I think it's so funny, like, this concept of, like, I'm not going to do a big music video. Instead, I'm just going to be jamming to my song and washing dishes. I love that. I think yes. it's so dope and she even leaves the, the like frame for like 20 seconds and so there's 20 seconds of just like a film of her kitchen and i think it's awesome like i love that music video which is it's a weird thing to love but no I'll, i need to watch this actually i will send it to you i think did you was there a preview or something again like i said i'm in and out of instagram bro yeah yeah so there like, might have been there might have been i think i saw a preview of it like but it was a preview. Oh, you didn't see the full thing? Yeah, I didn't get to okay, see the okay, whole okay. thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but please you. send it to me. It's, it's really weird. But the fact that I even brought up Utada, and you know who I'm talking about, yeah. is a, like, thanks to, like, all those different influences yes. coming in on the Philippines. I guess uh, there's, there's some use for all these, like, yeah. you know, weird bits of information yeah, that's and that, distorted there. Which is cool, because that's kind of, like, I feel like what you are as a vocalist. You know, you're an amalgamation of all these, like, weird random influences yeah. <laughs> making their way into you know a pure joy thank you well i mean pure joy interestingly enough i did have i was working on a song a few years ago called amalgamation and i wasn't like working on it heavily it was just like right. a, an idea i have now i have thanks evan now, for all these synchronicities back. now it's back fuck i have to do them <laughs> uh so what what are you what's the next like music thing coming for you are you just like doing more collaborations or do you have like uh, an album coming in the works or what's going on so of course more collaborations right so like obviously we have this song coming out right um i am um I'm, yeah i'm sure you've seen the catarinth one the, the catarinth collaborations that i've had with them so yeah, yeah that's yeah. more of like prog metal stuff yeah it's we awesome. are working on one right now great um so not gonna say much more about that so you don't want to you don't want to spoil anything yeah, yeah you know what i mean yeah. so we're gonna have that one song um, and like I mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, doing some backup vocals with uh, Chris Mendoza tonight at the usual place, <laughs> 9 p.m. If that's the thing. But they, I think they also do jam sessions there. So that might be a thing. Um, uh, I probably won't be just because I'm at the open mic at Taverna. Yeah, no, totally fine. Season, that, that, there, that's, we know this. That we're right. like, you know what we're, I mean? We're all in the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. that's, I'm, so I was telling Chris, I was like, I'm just happy like that people are doing shit. Like, right. I, I don't even, like, just as long as it's good for them, like, that's right. all I fucking care about. Right, right, right. You know right, what I right, mean? Right. But it's, like, it's just something that we say. So, like, yeah, so that's the thing that's going on. Then um, <laughs> I have to build my vocal booth <laughs> this right, week. Right, right. And then I can um, start recording, like, the, the, the songs that I have as far right. as, like, just my stuff. Cool. Just, like, kind of what you're talking about, like, with your own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, because I need to get back into that. Right. Um. Yeah, I don't want to look too far ahead. Right, That's right, what right. we have at the moment. Right, so the thing's going on right now. You got your, uh, your project coming out with the, the prog metal group. You're Katarinth, with. yeah. Katarinth. So he's a, yeah, it's a guitar player. Katarinth, mm -hmm. we've got our song Cut the Fabric coming out. Yeah. And then you're building a vocal booth so you can do more stuff yourself. Yes. Those are yeah. the things. And, Great. You know what I mean? And still, like, like you said, uh, collaborating with people, like as far as just performance-wise. Yeah. Out in the scene. Which so. is great. So that's what's going on. <laughs> awesome. I'm excited. I'm excited once the vocal booth is done because I, I do. I think Pure Joy People is great. Uh, that album, you guys have the Octopus Woman album. Awesome piece of music. And so I'm excited for new stuff you have. <laughs> oh, one thing I forgot to tell you. Yeah. So part of the reason, I don't remember what brought it up, but Harley and I were talking about bass players. And she's like, oh, well, PJ's a really good bass player. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, that means a lot coming from. <laughs> I know I was like, so it was, it was funny to me when you said like, oh, like, I don't even feel like I'm like much of a bass player, like da, 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 da. You're like, oh, I'm more of a guitar person. I'm like, Harley herself, 
like the bassist of Vegas, yes, you know, like she, I can't. That's why I'm okay. I'm like, I guess if she says okay. Yeah, like you know, like if you're thinking of like premier bass player in Vegas, at least in the rock scene, especially yeah. the first name that comes up is Harley Swisher. Yeah, she's and, uh, she's insane. So her praising your bass playing, there's nothing better. Than I know. That, that's I was like, whoa, wait. Well, but I mean, okay. Um, well, I was saying that I started with guitar, right? right, right, right. But like, but now not, you say better, but not better so bass. much. Yeah, but I not so much considered myself a guitarist. It's just that that's where I that's started. where you started. So I'm like, I feel like I was more rooted in that. Okay, but I mean, again, looking at this right now, the guitar and the bass right next to each other here in front of me. Yeah, I'm like, it's literally the first four strings of it, right? So it's like, no, like for the most, that was the other thing that clicked in my head. It's like you're already playing guitar, so yes, of course you can play bass. Anybody who plays guitar can play bass. Play bass well enough to right, for Harley that's, that's, to say. I know, but that's a, but what I mean is like, yeah, yeah, yeah you can yeah, take yeah. that further. You can you can take the first step toward the instrument, right? And um, here's the thing where I guess I I will uh, agree with the like I'm more of a bassist these days because like I've I do love even though I haven't been playing bass uh in the in the you know most recent times I I do love the bass because I just love that it's like this comfortable couch everybody can sit on. You know what I mean? Mm. And it just like it's I love that. You know what I mean? And it's like you can be a subtle with it or you can go fucking like less claypool with it if you want right. to. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? But even that, even the way that like that's so bass driven, um, it was like it's still not so in your face. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's it just has this nice, like it it almost has like um it's like butter on toast, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's where if if there's anything with me in the bass, it's more of like I really do have this love and appreciation for it these days. Yeah. But do I consider myself one of the best players, uh, bass players ever? No. But I do have this relationship with the bass, right. if that makes sense. So maybe that's what's permeating. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, Harley, Harley thinking of you as a bass player means to me, I'm like, oh, okay, she's made it. She's I know. Like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it's next level. So I'm like, now I want to. I want to see you playing the bass in something. I know now soon. I'm scared. No, <laughs> <laughs> I would be the opposite of scared. You have you have the Harley seal of approval. On I know, your but isn't playing. that fucked up? How our brains do that? Yeah, does that happen that's to true. you, bro? Like where yeah. you're like, no, dude. Like okay, so, okay. Going back to the like the yoga thing. Oh like, yeah. yeah, you you can you know you can teach it. And you're like, no, I'm not good at it. And they're like, right. they're obviously telling you that you're good at it. Yeah, but something in your brain is like, no. no. So okay. Yeah. Explain that. Well, how the fuck? I don't know. Why do we do this? We're unpacking this. <laughs> that is weird. Because, like, there are some things where I do consider myself good at. Mm -hmm. And, like, people say I'm good at it. And I'm like, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I would, I think I'm a good piano player. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I can come up with dope stuff on the piano. Yes, yes. Flows exist partially because of that. Because yeah. I'm confident with it. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. Like, when I think about music, I think of it in terms of a piano. Okay. A hundred percent. Like, vocals make sense to me when I think about them in terms of how they work with a piano. Right, right, right. Guitar makes sense to me when I think of it in terms of a piano. Like, all of it, all of that, that's how that works for me. Mm -hmm. Which is weird for some people, because they, they don't think of that. Right. But, um, oh, where was I going? But there's other things where, like, in hip-hop, when people are like, like I had this happen to me recently where after I uh, did a hip hop song, someone came up to me, some like black dudes, and they were like, dude, you're doing that real hip hop. And I was like, and they were like, oh man, how are you so East Coast? And stuff like that. They, they'll say stuff about what I'm doing. And I'm like, I don't even feel like this is real hip hop. <laughs> I like, just live like, here, bro. I, I'm like, I feel like I'm just a pop artist who's wearing a weird disguise right now. You know, like, I I just like listening to Nuja Bass and Jay Dilla and thought it would be cool if I made something similar to what they're making. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think I'm anything with hip hop. Yeah. So I get that in that sense. Mm. But then there's other things where I'm like, if someone compliments me on it, I'm like, yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. This is something I do know how to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, um, I think it's more of like, Going back to the aerial yoga stuff, right? Where I'm like, yeah, I should, I, I have no business being an aerial yoga. Yeah, why am I teach? You know, why am I learning how to teach this? Like, I don't, I'm not blah 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 and all this stuff. But, um, I remember one of my students, 
uh, wrote this song and it's like hitting like the, the top of their ring, right? Yeah. And so that's why I'm helping them with, you know, with their vocals so that they can record it properly. Right. Right. And yeah, he had this comment of like, oh, you know, oh, fuck, like I, I wrote this song and it's challenging and he's laughing at it. And then I think about it. I'm like, I've done stuff like that too. I've written stuff where I'm like, wow, I actually have to learn a new technique. Right? right or something to do this and it's like and i remember saying to him that it's like well i guess it was your like future self uh past self looking out for your present future self right now it wants you to get there oh i love that you know what i mean like so i yeah. think that's what it is like it i think it's valid to feel i mean i guess it's valid to feel anything but ah, i can't I, I wish i had a better term for that right now but that's what i have where, like, like you said, you're like, no, I'm good at this. It's what I do, blah, blah, blah. But there's some stuff that people will tell you that you're good at. It. And you're like, ah, right? And I think, yeah, like, it's, it's valid to feel that way at that time. Just because, like, of course, like, maybe especially for yoga. Like, you're like, I didn't, um, I wasn't doing this for a long time. I just, like, kind of started it. You know what I mean? And blah, right. blah, blah, and all that stuff. But it's a possibility. Right. And that you have that in your tool belt if you wanted to. Right. You know what I mean? If you wanted right. to put it out and just like, okay, work on it and make it sharper or whatever the fuck it is. Mm. So I think that's what's happening there. And um, I think like, especially um, going back to like the whole, you know, duo drum and bass thing, um, it, well, it was intimidating. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I'm playing the guitar and the bass on the fucking bass and I'm singing at the same time. And right. I'm not a bass player, quote unquote. It's right. not, I didn't grow up doing that, right? right. Again, so it's like, I guess, yeah, if I were to give credit to that past self of mine, yeah, like that was a feat. It's <laughs> incredible. You know what I mean? Wh whether it was like, again, is it like flea status or fucking Billy Sheehan? No, like that's not the point. It's the, the point was that you did that. What's crazy, you know? now I'm remembering that you playing that actually inspired part of my view on music. Mm. because I saw it and I was like, it's drums, it's bass and vocals. And at that moment, I'm like, that is what like so many pop songs are. Yeah. For yeah, the most part, yeah. they don't have instruments. Like you listen to a Dua Lipa track. Yes. In the verse, yeah. there's no, there's no synths. There's no guitars. There's nothing else. It's just drum, bass and vocal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all and you need. And they're so catchy. And they're amazing. Yes. Yeah. So that you doing that actually had an impact on how I perceived music. Wow. Where I was like, which is crazy. I forgot that that was like part of that. We're coming full circle yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause there was an album where I legit challenged myself where I was like, I don't want to have, like, I want to draw back and not use anything but bass, drum, and vocals wow, as okay. much as humanly possible. Yeah, yeah. That's the, it's an older album of mine called Giovanni. Mm. Um, and that only happened because of that experience. Wow. Which is crazy. And like other things happened too that drew me in that direction. Yeah. But it's so interesting that I, I it's just, it's, I'm like now remembering all these things. So it's, it's interesting. It's no, interesting. No, I'm having a, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm truly fascinated by that just because it's like, right. Okay. Right at this time. <laughs> right. I feel like, again, there's another pointer from the universe or whatever the fuck. That's just like, yes, again, keep doing what you're doing. It's right. for both of us. Right. You know it's what I'm saying? impacting people. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean that like, um, I've been uh, thinking about more uh, on the concept of um, intelligent failures, right? Mm. Like, I feel like humans are intelligent failures because like nobody can even really explain like humans really. Right. Because it's like, we can explain the whale where it came from. But, like, it's like, where the fuck? <laughs> and also how the fuck? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. But I feel like more and more, again, even just, I didn't know that that was going to be like th some kind of an impact to you. Right. 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 And it was me like basically facing my fears. It was me basically doing it out of necessity as well. Right. But also it's just like, fuck it. If I fail, like we're, we're going, doesn't fucking matter. Like right. we're here now. But when we think of like, a lot of the amazing artists that we know, or just like artists that, not even amazing, just artists that influence us. It's just that they were there being, being them. They're just being authentic. They're just doing the thing. 
Right. You know what I mean? Or, or they're cha- they're challenging themselves or they're exactly. facing their fears. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think that's like that's really what it is and um speaking of like the whole me uh you know meaning crisis that we've been having I feel like that's that, that's honestly it it's not like oh it's simple and this is just going to solve everything. But well, this is one of the biggest things about it is that with the rise of social media and all this stuff, right? We've we've we were forced to or influenced to force like or to create these avatars. Right. You know what I mean? Like these filtered whatever of ourselves. And even as artists, especially so hard in the, in this industry, it's yeah. like, okay, let me try to fit in or, okay, this is what the producers are. You know what I mean? This is what people like. This is what's going viral, blah, blah, blah. We try yeah. to do all these things, which is, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Like we're doing our best. Right. Right. But then you realize that you're like, I'm not, this is not who I am, or this is not aligning right. with what's, what's going on inside of me, right? I'm only doing that because my friends are doing that or whatever the fuck, or this is what's making money. But it all goes back into uh, to authenticity. Again, right. it's like when we try to suppress people who are saying like fucked up shit, I'm like, I feel like that's just going to create more problems. Right. Because it's like, now we don't know. It's more of like, I feel like it's for me how I like things. I'm like, tell me how it is. And that would be a, I'll, I'll be on a good to know basis at all times. Right. Because like, at least we now know where we stand. Like instead right. of playing these fucking games, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. because there's a bigger game that's happening, but also we could actually bro, like there's a funner game that we can play. Right. You know what I mean? Just like call the whole synchronicities yeah, and whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can. And this is where the new age thing comes of like a co-creating. You can co-create with the universe. Yeah. Cause like you were saying earlier, there's things that you can control and there's things that you can't control. And there's some things you don't think you can control that you actually can. Exactly. Which is the crazy one, yeah. But how would you know if you don't try? Right. Right? And so that's what I'm saying, like, where if you are your authentic self, meaning, like, I'm not saying that you should just go over share. Like, that's not what it is. It's right. more of, like, if, like, hey, so somebody invites you to something, right? And it's, like, we so, again, coming from the goodness of our hearts, <laughs> right. quote, unquote, like, we want to say yes, even though we're so overbooked right. or whatever. You know what I mean? Or sometimes maybe you just need a rest day. Yeah. Like maybe you don't, you're not even really doing anything, quote unquote. Right. But you just need a rest day. Yeah. Instead of saying, you know, like no to that, you go anyway. And sometimes right. good things happen. However, if you keep doing that, it will pile up. Right. Right. And then now you're really not being your authentic self. And this is where, in my opinion, and just from all the studies that I've been listening to as well, that's, just, that's where anxiety comes from, depression, mm. all these creative blocks that we're coming you know, right. Um, coming towards, well, it's coming from all that, but it really like, to me, my, my, my work as an artist, is more of like, yeah, just like me first and foremost, because you know, it has to be first and foremost for yourself. Right. Where you're like, you're trying to get to the root of you. You're trying to get to what you're really trying to express. Yeah. And then, you know, the bigger goal of that is to be of service of others. So like that actually, like, that's awesome that that happened for you. Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And, like, uh, that's all. That's all I can do. <laughs> right, totally. Well, it's, I find a lot of what you said interesting because, like, the things of, like, authenticity, greatness, uh, doing things that you're just doing, Yeah. you know, um, and doing them for other reasons, not doing them to try to inspire people. They end up inspiring people. Yeah. It makes me think of someone like Max Martin with, creating groups like the Backstreet Boys oh, where like yeah. <laughs> like to a certain extent you're like this is a bit of a money move right you know yeah like a lot of what's going on there is songwriters and producers trying to make money yeah and they did make a ton of money yeah uh but it had a massive musical impact on me as a kid bro I mean again we were talking about like the whole the origin stories of like okay dance so yeah. yeah, that was my jam. Backstreet Boys, was, Britney Spears, Christina insane. Aguilera, all these. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm there. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm totally with it. And it's weird because it's stuff that's incredibly artistically inspiring. But just like you were just like, oh, this was just me facing my fears. Them, they're just like, we're just here to make something great. Yes. But also to make money. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm absorbing it. And like, this is, this is high art to me, <laughs> which like it shouldn't be. Right. Technically. But to me, it was amazing. Yeah. Like this, this pop art, this like commercial art was everything to me growing up. And I still revere it. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with like the thought of like 
trying to appeal to a certain thing yeah. because it can create another type of art. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I totally be awesome. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's just like the whole going back to the six and nine thing, right? Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Looking at it from a different yeah, angle. Yeah, it's just a different angle. And I think yeah. like speaking off like balancing and finding the middle path for someone like me, I've always had to think about like, okay, um, maybe my writing needs to be less poetic, not because like to be liked or whatever, but to maybe connect a little or, bit more or even to do something different yeah you know what i mean yeah so okay like maybe that all right maybe like dude maybe you're okay with you know being a broke artist however if you want to reach more just again to connect like you you want to make sure that you have a home <laughs> you know what i mean right, that right. there's a place you can record you know what i mean like just basic shit right so it's right. like oh okay that's where you know okay, we do need to make some money. Okay, right. we do ne need to get paid for gigs. You know right. what I mean? And, and that need can create something that inspires someone else. Exactly. Which is so and cool. again, it's just like, you're, you always, like, uh, you know, I'm, again, you know this with recording and stuff. You, you, there are limiters for a reason. Yeah. Right? Where it's just like, okay, well, you know now that, okay, you do need money to make more music and blah, 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 whatever. Of course, you can do that anywhere. But as far as like to actually produce it and get it out there, right? Right. But you're like, okay, there is a limiter though where it's like you don't want to be too uh, too much on that side because now you get super greedy. And then, you know what I mean? Like, right. it's like the fall of the Roman Empire. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? All yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know what I mean? There's just like all these limiters that you have just, just so you don't. You don't, you, know, get, you don't get that, that part of it too loud. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, see, love that. See, love that. That, which, which, now which we're is, the, which is what a compressor yeah. or a limiter is. Exactly. So cool. And then, like, I love to use the whole thing of, like, uh, the ozone layer around the earth. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's there, but you can still get out. You know what I mean? Right. That's totally fine, but it's there for a reason. It's so that we can protect us from the UV rays. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's necessary still. Yes. Because, like, I think, like, even with, like, the, yeah, it, you can adjust the compressors and all that stuff or whatever, but you can also adjust yourself. Like, maybe you sing, like, uh, further away from the mic or whatever the right. fuck you're doing. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. So, yeah, that's just, that's my whole thing about it. But I, I wanted to ask you this, actually, because okay. you asked me earlier. So... Um, and I'm not sure if I've already talked about this before, but like, great, your, you're just you, curious. Your origin story. Oh, so mine? like, I had mine, and what's yours? Okay, I, I'm. I haven't actually talked about this with the podcast. I don't think so. I think this is actually interesting. So Yay. I, so music I was raised on. Um, my mom had us listening to a ton of the Beatles. Oh yeah. So I was like super hyper exposed to the Beatles, uh, and then. My dad liked a lot of like those '80s pop groups, mm. like George Michael. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he really liked In Excess, and so that was kind of seeping in as well. Um, and then my like the thing I got into first was 100% the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and from like a little kid, I decided, like at first, I was kind of like, I want to be this, I want to be this, because like you know, as a kid, they ask you what you want to be. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what I want to be? I want to be a, like a rock star and a scientist was kind of like <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what I said. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm actually like somewhat living that now, yeah, yeah. you know, which is interesting because like, you know, doing stuff on computers is kind of sciencey. And, yeah. like, and also I, I kind of want to be a scientist. I don't know why I got this in my head, but to, in my brain, I was like, I don't ever want to die in a war. And the way I can do that is be a scientist. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's actually pretty smart, yeah. Because <laughs> then I won't be ever on the front lines, right, right. you know? Um, which is just the little kid thing. So yeah, as a kid, I, I loved the Backstreet Boys, and I was super into that, and I was like, I'm going to be like that, like on stage. I watched like their little films they put out, like yes. just huge Backstreet Boys fan. It actually like, surprised me when I first realized that part of their appeal was like to younger women. Yeah. I was like, wait, like, that <laughs> that's not makes sense. Like these are... The, the, these are my these are my bros like these are like i felt like they were like older brothers to me you know whoa yeah i love that perspective i've never heard anybody uh mention this in this way so um that's that's really interesting to me but also i have a question yeah to that who's your favorite backstreet boy <laughs> uh carter Nick carter <laughs> of course right he's the best one apparently yeah i mean 
Okay, so I had this. Um, He's the strongest vocalist in the group, for sure. I mean, yeah, but what about AJ though? I mean, AJ's great. Everyone in the group's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. Nick no. Carter's amazing. No, he is, and I think like I think for me, um, just because like of course like he's he just had this look. You're right. just like it's Nick Carter. Okay, everybody knows Nick Carter. Right. And like I think with AJ, like he had this a uh, little bit more the grit. Yeah, right? yeah, he has more grit to the vocal. And he was like a, the older everything. dude that just like a little bit more. So like they're totally different in that way. They're right. not even comparable. Yeah. Right? And like you said, they're all in the Backstreet Boys. So it's totally legit. Right. But yeah, yeah. That was- so, so I was into that. I got, and then I started songwriting and like trying to perform in front of people my songs super young. Yeah. Like, Were you dancing too? Yeah, dancing, oh, singing, yeah. writing my own songs. <laughs> when I was like... There's like films of me. I don't know how old I was probably like four or five. So just like tiny little person yeah. writing their own songs, oh, singing them so for people. Adorable. It's it's pretty cute. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Like looking back on it, I'm like, oh, this is so cute. I look at the listen to the songs and I'm like, ooh, like I thought that was good. Um, which is how all songwriting starts, you know. Right. It's, it's right. all pretty terrible, especially if you start young. <laughs> you know. Um, and so then because I was so into it, everyone's like, oh, you're like a mini Mozart. Because Mozart started really oh, young, right? Mini and so Mozart. And so then I started being like, well, what do I have to do to be like Mozart? Right. <laughs> like, screw this. If I'm gonna be great, I'm gonna yeah. be as good as Mozart. So then I, I worked on that end of things, started studying classical music, got into the piano, um, got pretty good at the piano. Mm. Uh and then I got exposed to emo music in a big way. Mm. And that was a huge influence to me. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna be an emo rock star. And I just kind of kept having these things where I was like, oh, yeah, I want to do this. And then I went to college, got my economics degree, worked in it for a couple of years, saved up a bunch of money. Well, so it's so I different. Could... <laughs> well, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I was like a pretty smart kid, you know, like uh, I skipped third grade, graduated high school at like 16. Yeah. Uh, didn't pay for college at all. That's awesome. You know, got like scholarships all the way through. Yeah. So I was like. I also had that going on mm. and a lot of the expectation was, oh, you're, you've got to like do something with that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking like, oh, I'm going to go to school for like music or film or something artsy. Yeah. And my mom was like, let's have something you can fall back on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> let's have like a degree that's a little more in the practical realm. And at first I was like, no. And so, but then eventually I was like, whatever. And so then I got my economics degree, mm. which Mick Jagger also got. So... <laughs> Me and Mick Jagger. <laughs> and even when I was getting it, I someone was asking me, like, oh, you're getting an economics degree? And I'm like, yeah, just like Mick Jagger. And she was like, it was like an old teacher when she's just like, okay. <laughs> what? Like, that's not who you think of when you think of economics degrees. Right. Like, you want to be Mick Jagger? And I'm like, yeah, I want to be like the lead singer in a rock group. I want to be like a, a I want to be a rock star, yeah. you know? And to me, that's part of the path mm. is to get an economics degree for me. Wow. Which okay. is not, a normal part of that path right, right. by any means. So then I got the economics degree, worked in that field for a couple of years, songwriting the whole time. And then I saved up a bunch of money so that I could pursue music full time mm-hmm. and have that as kind of like an underlying thing to support me mm-hmm. until I could support myself yeah. through music and through like doing artistic things. Whoa. Yeah. I, I didn't know a lot of that. So that yeah. was very interesting to learn. That's the origin story. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, um, yeah, we were talking about this earlier and like you were saying, having this like kind of supplement to uh, as far as flows, right? Uh, it's, and the reason why I, I even, it's funny because that's like, that was such a long time ago, but I know that we kind of went off on a tangent, which happens with me. I right. understand. I'm- right. This is, <laughs> this is definitely going to be the longest podcast yeah. I've done. <laughs> Just by the way, like, both the ones today have been incredibly long, but this one is, we're already past the two hour mark. Oh my so God. So this is going to be a okay, lot of Okay, yeah. So Some again, of them have been like 45 minutes. I'm sorry, again, I, like it's, you said. It's fine. I, you know, fine. I've been in the long living, form we're situation. Living, we're living it. But so, that's funny enough. We're okay, deep. Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to try to wrap it up a little, you know, towards the finish. Uh, we're, we're, we're chilling. We're chilling. I'm going to have to start making dinner at some point. Soon, oh, but. no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I have to get ready for that show, right? Right, tonight. right, right, right. But like, um, since I discovered like these podcasts or just like going back to like my, um, what do you call this? Like favorite artists, like catalogs and stuff. Like, let's right. say, okay, for example, uh, 
uh, um, uh, going back into like instrumental music and just like, I'm really getting back into that again. Um, mm -hmm. so listening to Michael Phillip, he kind of uh, mentioned Circus Survive and all he had, um, Colin on there that on his interview and all that stuff. I'm like, oh, oh let me let me let me listen to Circus Survive again. I was like, oh, I totally forgot. I love Circus Survive. Circus Survive's dope. Blue Sky Noises, right? That you know what I mean. And I was like, my favorite song of all the time from them is "I Felt Free." Obviously, love, there's I a lot free. of stuff, but you know what I mean. I'm just like, I the, love that I just hits, free. bro. And I'm just like, ugh, okay. And it's so funny because like Michael and Colin will were talking about like some synchronicity shit on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send you that episode. Great, please. Yeah, so it's it's great, right? So I'm like, okay, that's happening. And then now, like, you're consuming so much of this of of the episodes, right? And then you're like, fuck, I reached the I reached the the most recent one, and I'm like, let me go back. And thank God, there's a back catalog. And I'm like, holy shit, okay, cool. And then in between all that, just to like diversify it, I'm like, okay, what are some of the songs? Because also, I I I've been recommending it to my students. I'm like, well, if you're kind of having a block right now, like. Um, go back to why you like me again. If you're like, you know, I, I like the Backstreet Boys. Like that's okay. Go back to that. Try to you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, and which I've been doing actually, funnily enough. Right. I've been going yeah. back to the Backstreet Boys and listening to their old stuff and being like, okay, what are they doing? What do I like about this? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what it is. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like doing that with the thing, and I'm like, um, I think one of the best guitar players in town for sure. I I I haven't seen anything from him lately, but like Jackie Vincent, right? Okay. Whom he used to be the guitar player of uh, Falling in Reverse. But oh, okay. after that, he did his solo stuff. He had his other bands and all that. So there's been a, quite a few guitars for Falling in Reverse. Was he the Asian guitarist? Or no, 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 I think, when did he leave? Was it 2016? Okay, so he's more a recent one. Yeah, I mean, honest, look, disclaimer. I, did, I, I don't know a whole lot about like the no, Falling totally in good. Reverse totally discography. Good. No, you're good. But they, I think, they just had a ton. They've gone through so many instrumentalists for all the different I'm parts. sure, yeah, they had Ronnie like... is the only consistent <laughs> member in that band. I know, and then for me, I only really know this one. That's, you know, you just this know is, Jackie Vincent. Yeah, this is how Great. much I know of, about Perfect. Falling in Reverse, right? But like, I just, just because I'm in the realm of like prog and like instrumental, you know, guitars right. and stuff like that, I was like, okay. And then I'm like, I'm listening. I'm like, I, f you know, found this album. I'm like, okay, let me go back. What's, what's the back catalog? You know what I mean? So this has been going on. So what I'm saying is <laughs> for, for the flows, mm -hmm. having this, like supplemental you yeah. know what i mean content to it yeah like for me someone like me i'm like bro <laughs> this is everything <laughs> exactly yeah. and especially having like the longer episodes i look, look they all have their purposes you know what i mean yeah. i just know for me like i'm like okay if you if you if you're only looking for like a short amount of time i'm probably not your gal you know what i mean right, right, and right, that's right. okay right, you know yeah. because the, i i will go on a whole thing so yeah which I love, <laughs> which, and it's been so much fun. And you've been, you've been great to have on. I, I just like chatting with you too. I think you're an interesting person. Same here, bro. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's why I was like, well, we're doing a podcast. I'd even, it's funny because it's like, it didn't register that much. It's like, it was pinged in my brain. Mm -hmm. Right. But like, now that we're actually doing it, it was like, ah, that's why I was pinged. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It's funny. Cause even like our first time, we really like talked to each other, which was you were doing a 90 proof show. And yeah, it was like yeah. me, you, Rich, uh, Joe, and Eileen were mm -hmm. all like hanging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked for like hours. So I'm <laughs> yes. just like, oh, that's just how you have a discussion with PJ. Like there yeah. is no there is no short discussion with PJ. If you're talking to PJ, you're gonna you, you gotta set apart a couple hours because yeah. PJ's gonna go off. <laughs> I know. Which is great. It's super fun. And you, you're, you're a fun person and it's been a pleasure. Well, thank you. And also, again, thank you for, you know, riffing with me again, even during those times. It's just, it's something I love to do because yeah, I also great. like to learn about other people. And again, I'm like, I didn't know your origin story. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't know that we met at VMS. I didn't, you know what I mean? So right. it's like, again, if we, if we were only here for like 10, 10 20 minutes. minutes yeah. It's, it, you, you don't get into that as much. Yeah. Like, yeah. I won't know about that. Like, I like, I like long form stuff yep. like in general. And I think that's the other reason too, why I'm like, I've always had an appreciation for instrumental, classical music, you know, guitar prog stuff like that. Just because I'm like, it does take a certain type of patience and yeah. time and effort to appreciate these types of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, 
I don't know. I like that you, shit. You, you, like, you like putting in the effort for the long, long haul. I do. And yeah, but yeah, I also great. understand that, you know, not everything has to be like that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> for those who stuck around for this whole thing, thanks for sticking around. For those who stuck around, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Indie Magazine Podcast. Be sure to rate, subscribe, and share with friends who enjoy music, movies, and TV. We'll be back with another episode from this series soon where Kevin sits down with Vintage. So you won't want to miss that. Thank you.